Fire and safety evacuation procedure, there are no um, fire drills planned, so if the fire alarm goes off, exit through the fire drill there and gather outside. Uh, recording protocol is as uh, usual, I'll read through this. The council, members of the public uh, and the press may film record photograph for uh, live and or subsequent broadcast only when the public press are not lawfully excluded. Any member of the public attends a meeting and objects to being filmed should advise the clerk in advance when it's that they are not to be included in the film recording photograph. Okay, everybody clear? Mm. Good. We're recording? I am recording. We're recording. Good. Okay. I need a call of you as well. Yeah. Well, so. that's all right. Okay, so, uh, public session. Any members of the public may make a comment if they wish now to councillors. Um, now, we've just debated whether or not we've been taking sort of advice on where um, Cheryl might want to interject. Now, it may be that there's some way we can give feedback in the budget item, but would you like to uh, go through your proposal for the budget now? I've been told this is the time. Can I suggest, well, I, we discussed it a little bit earlier, but as far as we can tell, uh, what the procedure would normally be is a councillor who is not on the committee may make a statement before the agenda item. That's only in the At the um, chairs. At the, that's an FNO. Only, oh, oh, that's I'm happy to speak now. Yeah, it just seems to make more sense to do it just before the item. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chair discretion. Well, it's, you can, isn't it suspending some standing? Yeah, yeah. to allow someone to speak. Directly before the if that's especially if the councillors are not proposing the motion. But I don't know what the standing rules are. Well, are there standing orders which are came out every different night? Got them printed on the bed sheets. But they do no, they do say specifically that, that a councillor yeah. may speak right. on an agenda item okay. at the chair's discretion. So I think that pretty because if you were to say something now, I'll have forgotten it by the time. So I think it's more exactly. appropriate to, if you, you chair to present so. or say something before <laughs> When we come to the event. Yes, is that okay? Is everyone happy with that? Yeah. Okay, so we will do that then. Uh, no other uh, items been brought up. Uh, apologies for absence. We haven't received any. I haven't received any. Um, declarations of interest and dispensations. Any members want to declare anything since the last time we met? No? Okay. Hello. Hey, just in time. Um, so, item six, confirm the uh, previous minutes, which are. Yeah. So, does anybody have any comments on the previous minutes? Which I um, I spelt um, Linda's surname wrong. Apologies. Um, oh yeah. Cross it out and put the right name. Yeah. Absolutely. Good grief. Right. Right. So, yes. Right. Yeah. It's the 18th still, is it? It's still the 18th. Still 2023. Good grief, nearly not. Right, so, done that one. Uh, approval of payments as signature of the monthly bank reconciliation. Does anybody have any comments on this? If people had a look. So that's the, that's, this is new. This, so you just you sign the bank reconciliation. For this the, one? Which is that yeah. one. You sign that one. And that's just, that's just to show the cash book that they yeah. used, that it has been reconciled. So Do I sign this one as well? Yes, please. Just the top one. Somebody else has that. Yes, that would be me. Okay. Does anybody want to make any comments before I send? We haven't seen those. You haven't seen that? I thought we were sent, we're not sent. Not those, those oh. are just not. not All there. right, so. So what's the Excel? That's the PDF, right? That's the PDF, is the payment. Yeah. Right. And hopefully you should have all had the monthly big spreadsheet. Apologies, it went out on Friday because we had issues with Rialta, so I couldn't shut the month down. But hopefully you've all seen that. I didn't print it off, but on my computer's over there. So um, hopefully you did get it. Yeah. Yes, so, number, how to make 
Dunham item 9, to note and review the interim uh, internal auditor's report. Sure. I have a couple of questions. Um, so I'm just trying to understand, so we've, obviously we had a previous internal audit report. Mm. And we've never got a new internal audit report. Do you have an internal, you have, because you're a big council, or class is a big council, um, every council has to be internally audited yeah. before, before you approve the accounts in May. But because you're a big council and class is a big council, you have what they, what they call interim accounts, yeah. audits. So he's come in and done the first one okay. in November. The second one will be in February, and then the final one will be the end of the year. So this is his first interview. Okay, fine. Um, um, what time period is this over, this internal audit? This, this is from this financial year, April, it says on there, April to October. Okay, because I'm just... I, 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 I'm just concerned that neither of the internal audit reports have picked up the problems that we. No, he would only do this year. He wouldn't. He won't do previous years. No, no. So, so in, so, so there were there were a number of issues that were. Um, so if we go back to, it would, it would include April this year. Yeah. So he only did the accounts in this yeah. one. Okay. So there were there were obviously problems back in April when we know that the, the the previous administration approved their budget in April when it should have been done in February and as a result of that there were issues to do with the insurance for example was one example where they budgeted 7,000 it turned out to be 17,000 so the budget was 10,000 pounds that would be in last year's so that's in last year's internal audit report should have been should have been so, so what date is this one starting from? Because that was April. Well, the well, the insurance and the budget would have been done last year. Okay. So he, he doesn't he did, he's only looked at twenty three to twenty four this financial year. Okay. Rate. And what and and the eighty thousand pounds worth of invoices that weren't budgeted that you found. That's not been mentioned in the internal audit. No, because that's just internal management, though, isn't it? It's, that's a that's not what he's looking at. Well, this is what I'm trying to understand. What is that? How? He looks at the account. So this, he's so he's coming and he's looked at the accounts. Okay. He's coming back in February to look at the governments. Okay. And the paper. Okay. Right. Um, and and he refers to the BDO in external audit reports. Still hasn't come in. So he hasn't seen this, and we haven't seen it. Do we know when that's going to come in? Do you know what the holdup is? I will chase after Christmas. Okay. Well, they, well they, the hold up was because you didn't do your public rights notice. So they had to wait for that to be done. Okay. That only finished a month ago. Right. Okay. And they, and they don't have many staff out of, what I call, out of season. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Fine. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So this will be, this is going to be noted and then, and then the full council will need to approve it. So mm -hmm. we noted that. Mm -hmm. We noted that. That's good. So we we'll move on to um, item ten. Yeah. Sorry. Well, go on. Which is Katie Wecker tenders for the scrub clearance work taking place throughout some of Yeah. So some Valerie discovered as a Bainside project um, have got key areas throughout Westfield, Radstock, and then some of Norton as being the Town Park and Wallet Brook Walk, where they need to do scrub clearance. So as a panel, um, which has included Miriam Warn of the, the Baines lead, Andy King from New Leaf, and then the three clerks, have sat down um, and gone out, well, gone out to tender, received back in the, the bids from three different contractors. We've independently scored them all, um, looked through all their proposals, looked through all their, their paperwork, and decided on a company, uh, which is in the spreadsheet, which was attached to the agenda. So really it's for you to approve it basically to that we'll go ahead so two and a half thousand per um, area so it'll be a financial contribution contribution from Reds, uh, from Midsum and Norton five five thousand. Any questions? 
So the money is, has been allocated in the budget? No. It hasn't been allocated. <laughs> it will do it in a moment. Right, okay. Yeah. Sorry, I was, I was to told budget. about it, but it oh. slipped <coughs> Is that, but is it five thousand pounds? Is it five thousand? It's been agreed this, this year. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's been agreed. Isn't it? It, agreed? it has been agreed yeah. quite a long time ago yes. with with somebody we discovered that we would contribute towards the scrub clearance. Yeah, right. but this is all yeah. kind of. Yeah. It just hadn't appeared in it. And they manage all the sort of like all the scrubs taken away or yeah. chipped or. Yeah. Exactly that. Wouldn't be another cost. No. No. Yeah. Yeah. And the recommendation is. That energy. Yeah. Uh, does anybody have any comments to make on that? Happy with that? Happy with that? Yeah, okay, yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so that's and it will take place in a phased kind of over a couple of years, so um, that will be managed by Miriam and her team. There are obviously some areas like in Hayden Batch that need work doing at certain times of year with their special grasslands, so the work will be programmed to kind of suit the, the time of the year and the how urgent it is that that area gets seen. So it might not happen immediately, but it is all part of a master bigger plan. Good, I'll be happy. <laughs> okay, good. So that's item 10. Item uh, 11, this is um, street marshals for the Christmas period. Does the, um, the, the council or the clerks been contacted uh, by someone at, at Mallards, yeah. they, they think, um, who requested some um, uh, marshals over the Christmas period yeah. and they sort of looked into that the dates are there they, they put out a tender to several contracts, several companies, yeah. one's come back one's come back in um, and so we have money in the uh, budget yeah. that we could allocate to that if we feel um, inclined to fund it um, the, uh, my understanding is that it would be, we, we would have to uh, pay for it ourselves we're going to give the money to somebody else to Mallard or somebody else to, to pay for, so we would be responsible for it. So the the issues, the only issues really are um, who's managing them and overseeing their work, and um, um, you know, who, who's deciding where they go and um, and when. Yeah. So. so in the brief that I put together, which came largely from previous Marshall sort of briefs that had been put out. Um, but basically, it's for two people, um, and you know, we we tell them when 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 we want them to work, the dates that we want them to work, and the area in which we want them to kind of patrol, I suppose, as it were. Um, and then we want them to fill out their uh, sort of debriefing form and let us know the sorts of things that they've um, dealt with throughout the evening. So we do get some <coughs> you know feedback from them, and then. Um, I've asked them to fill out an appendix really showing us their um, certificates and their insurance and all that sort of stuff. And we've only had one company come back, um, we're, which will cost 1340 plus VAT, uh, which includes double time for the bank holiday hours that they've been working. Um, yeah, but as you say, in terms of the management of these people, I, I, don't, I don't know where the requirement, sort of how it bubbled up, really. Um, but we have to move quite quickly to get this on the agenda for tonight and to get yes. any campus back. So unfortunately, it's starting on the twenty second. Starting on the twenty second, yeah. Um, it's the, the company that we've heard back from is uh, Orbital yeah. Facilities. Yeah. I don't know if you're familiar with that. We've used those before. What? Uh, what? Any comments? Well, we didn't see very it's much for it. No, it's not five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, three, four, four, five, six, six, seven nights for five hours a night for mm. two people. Mm. That's a hell of a lot of time for the money. Mm. Mm. That's not that's fair enough. Yeah, you're right, it doesn't seem a lot of money for them. Ten no. hours per night then, isn't it? If it's two people. Yes. Mm. Well, they oh, it's, they going, it's a going rate, is it? It's like less they than they Right. Well, I mean, it, that's what they yes, that's quite nice. Nice. So that's yeah. that, but it doesn't no, it doesn't seem well, a lot, doesn't it? Hang on, we've got um, one would be about two thousand pounds. That's what we've got here. Hmm. Well, well, I think it would be you know it, uh, over the busy holiday time, you know, it, it would be good to have extra security. I don't disagree on, with that. And hmm. we've got the money, and it'd be a good gesture to provide <laughs> marshals. Um, we made the provision yeah. at last year's. 
preset uh, budget, draft budget, didn't we? We decided that, react, that, that, that having every single week marshals was too expensive. It was incredibly expensive. Mm. Um, you and we decided to leave something in the budget if something arose. Yeah. And to be fair, the firm has quite likely said you have made some provision. Well, I, I think that. I mean, I, I, I agree. I, with, I mean, the, that provision was was used elsewhere. So that it I, is. It is in it, correctly. You have put it in the budget, but you've now spent that money elsewhere. Mm. You are currently running. You are currently running um, square or budget. That was something else we were spending on the, the security budget that hasn't been touched. Yet. No, but then, no, but we had an eighty thousand pounds worth of un, unbudgeted <coughs> expenses, in, invoices to pay. So it, it's it's been reallocated to so six thousand has been reallocated somewhere else. Mm. So is that it was actually, a massive demand. Sorry, it wasn't. No, it hasn't been fired or anything. Mm. My computer's over there. Um, I'll move down. But even just on things like the uh, the grants, yeah. we, we quite you can't, you know. grants have gone over. Well, I'm so, thinking if there's, was it just one person that asked for the marshal? Well, it's probably no or one. I don't know where the conversation actually came from. Yeah. I don't know if anybody can. So it, it, came, it came from Mallard's pub. Right. Um, so there's been a single request from Mallard's, um, not many of the other venues. Um, I mean, there is, I mean, you know, I'm advocate for having street marshals. I think, um, as I say, the town is, is changing and evolving at the moment, and if anything, it's moving more towards people going out and, and drinking and eating than just being what this was tradition, just a drinking town. Um, so I think street marshals do provide some, um, some safe safety and security, particularly for residents that feel a bit apprehensive about coming down the town at night to access restaurants and stuff. Um, so it's something that at some point we're going to revisit the, the album about having them every weekend. Whether we have them for this period here, um, I would suggest if we could afford it, it's, it, it, it's not a bad idea to give people confidence to come down the town. There are still issues in the town, there's still issues with our social behaviour. So looking at the screen, Yes, you have. Street marshals, you did allocate street marshals. You did you did allocate six thousand four hundred and twenty-five mm -hmm. But if you scroll Wait. down to the bottom, because you've overspent and you've got stuff that hasn't been. Budget at the moment, or two thousand seven thousand over budget. Hmm. So, that is, you know, it's actually technical five thousand over budget. It's being spent. I was going to say, the, um, yeah, I mean, as I say, we made a provision for it. Yes, they've asked. It is a busy time over year, um, and I think I don't really feel the council should really be able to refuse that because we we agreed it at last year's budget. It'd be interesting to see what the report comes back. I'm assuming we'll get them to do a similar sort of loop to the one. Well, this is the problem. This is always historically been the problem. Is it's it's okay having street marshals provided they're effective, mm. and they're only effective if they're managed correctly. Yeah. And, and with this, yeah, this problem historically they haven't been managed correctly, which means they've have been they haven't been of any use or of limited use. Yeah. So I think if we're going to have them, they need to understand very clearly what their role is. And what we're expecting from them. Yeah. So I would say, if we're going to do it, let's make sure they understand that. And how are we going to do that? In, in well, they three didn't days. understand the brief. Well, <laughs> well yes, they've got the brief. Yes. There, there is a brief. Yeah, there but they a... didn't understand it because they didn't respond in the way that I'd asked them to respond. So. Well, typically, when when the council's gone out for bids for street marshals, they've had no response because all the companies didn't understand or felt that the bid was too complex to respond to. So I think we need to be very clear, we need to clarify exactly, I mean especially over a short period of time it's very easy to be very clear about what exactly we want them to do. Mm. But we need the input from, I suppose, the business owners yeah. to, to say what is it exactly that, that you want the, these marshals to be doing. If we're employing these people then we need to be mm. employing them properly. I think it's important to understand special. what street marshals can and can't do and I think, I mean, first of all, street marshals are not there to get involved in confrontation. Uh, in the same way as a PCSO is not there to be involved in confrontation. They're effectively there to monitor what's going on, 
to call in resource when it's needed, for example, call in the police if they're needed, to advise CCTV to monitor something if there's an issue, uh, things like that, and to keep a record of what's going on. Um, but they're not here to, to, to jump in the middle of a fight and stop a, a break up a fight. Yeah. They're not allowed to do that. They have no more rights than you or I, with or without an SIO badge. So, uh, yeah. So I think, I think if, if the council's minded to, to approve this, then we need to have a meeting with the, um, the company beforehand and make sure they understand what their operatives are, are going to be doing. So that's before this week. That's three days away. Yeah. Yeah. So and they confirmed they've actually got staff available because yeah. it's it's difficult enough these days to find security staff. Mm. Really difficult to find security. There's a, there's a shortage of SIA badge security staff. No, it's actually because the last. Don't worry that they're available. The last marshal tender ended actually because they they left. Yes. They just stopped it. But. Um, anyway, yeah, so the, the issue is, I mean, the Red Harbour Club was um, a bath company. Yeah, well, somebody else stepped, was saying somebody else stepped in, didn't they? Because the, the oh, we had to let in, and, and, and that's why it stopped yeah. because we hadn't authorised them. Because well, um, I'm quite happy to propose this. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, just, it's just the, the yeah. mechanism, isn't it, of who's going to individually speak to them That'll and liaise awesome. between them and the, the businesses, that, mm. the, the town area where they, mm. they know what they've got this document outlining what we're expecting of them, mm -hmm. but actually what that becomes, you know, in town needs something else. So who's going to do yeah. that? That's the only thing to discuss. Assuming that they're already, assuming they're already familiar with marshalling, yeah. I don't know if they have any other marshalling contracts. Are they involved in the bath marshalling or? Yeah, well it says that the track record of delivering services across Bath and Wiltshire as well as nighttime economy venues, we also provide city marshals for Bath BID. This consists of di day and night marshals for experience okay. crime reduction and assisting with medical emergency to relieve pressure on emergency services. And they say they've got a wealth of staff that can be used for the roles of midsummer and autumn, over Christmas and beyond if required. All the staff are SIA li licensed to door supervise their standard and they're screened and vetted to BS 7858 standard. They've copied in their assurance and they're giving us their prices. Okay. Mm. As, the, as the, as the, as the, the, the um, employer, we are licensed to wherever we are. If there was any issues, would they be able to contact us during the period of their, their work? I mean, if the office is open, is anyone available? If we are to employ them, not allowed. Well, between not, ten not and three. No. Well, the previous. No, I mean, I mean, on the twenty fourth, twenty sixth, thirtieth, and thirty of uh, the, the previous December. marshals never would have um, contacted council. Okay. But I know, but they, they were employed on a, on a different contract, and they knew what they were doing. The other, was it? Yeah. Right, okay, yeah. so... Well, my only one thing is if it was to improve the, uh, what should we call it, the food, food economy, restaurant yeah, yeah, economy. Yeah, yeah. 10 p.m. is a little bit late for a lot of people to eat. I think if you're going to have, um, if you're trying to encourage safer eating, mm. maybe... Is, is, is the 7, 8 o'clock problem? I don't know, but I mean, if it's like to encourage people to have meals. Mm. Yeah, they, they, they will have already eaten. They will have already, already yeah. eaten, yeah. But anyway, it was just fair enough. But, so we are only doing this because Mallard's has asked for it. So just to be clear, mm, yeah. Mallard's came to us because they had a conversation with the council. It was me. Oh right. Well, I did ask how they were getting on with that market. He said it's hard. I said, well, we made provision for it. Well, I think I mean we have to we have to be clear about whose responsibilities are, because every venue have a responsibility mm. for their own security and security of their customers. Mm. So we're not. We're not talking about, we're talking about what happens between venues, not at venues. Mm. And street marshals are not there to provide mm. extra door staff for venues. Mm. Yeah. That's what that feels Well, to be fair to the Mallards, they actually have one of the better door security provisions in town, I'd say. Certainly on Fridays and Saturdays. Certainly. Yeah. Yeah. They have door staff. They have door staff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, the, the, uh, unfortunately, in the town at the moment, there are only two venues that have door staff now. That's myself at Fat Sands and Mallards. And Mallards, okay. So um, they've got, they do have door staff here. So I think their argument was because other people maybe don't. They feel that they're not allowed, am I right, they're not allowed to operate out beyond their boundary, the door staff. Once you, once you move outside your premises, then, yeah, you, you're, you're operating as, as a member of the public, effectively. I mean, you have an SIA badge. But, um, but yeah, so, so 
we can we can do this, but the venues need to be responsible for their. I mean, Wimbledon's don't have door staff anymore. Oh, um, Riverside occasionally have one doorman. See, Spins used to have uh, staff. Crossways, oh, they used to the Crossways used to. Oh. Crossways, very Just for a shop. Sure, for a shop period. Mm. Yeah, they've not had them for a long, long time. So there literally are two, only two venues in the town that have door staff. I always have a minimum of three staff, normally four on my venue. I think Manor's normally have two on theirs, mm. but the rest of the venues don't have any door staff. And this is this works as a as a deterrence and a, and a way of getting resource in, for example, police when they're needed. Mm. But it's like it's not the solution to everything. This mm. is this is a one part of a jigsaw puzzle. I mean, when you say that, one part of the jigsaw, so in part of the report that was submitted by the Mallards, so they talked about um, an increase in antisocial behaviour. They talked about masked or partly, partially masked youths running amok in the high street. And I know I've said this a few times, but I think this is why we need to find out what's going on with surveillance in the town to find out how much that that is that's true. How much, if there's any, any case of them, if, if if that is true, there should be an evidence base to hand over to the police. Mm. But without some way of gathering evidence, which would be cameras typically, mm -hmm. it just becomes so, kind of hearsay. So, I do think that's why Baines and the town council, if necessary, needs to have some way of of recording uh, antisocial behaviour like that to create an evidence base to say to the correct authority, the police, to say, look, there is a problem and we can prove it, as opposed to just kind of... But that's, and that's what a street marshal scheme is, it does. It doesn't do it in this, because this is, this, is a, this is a handful of nights. This is not going to provide the yeah. database and the evidence yeah. Yeah. that the police need. Mm. Just um, be a, a I mean, we have an inherent problem in Midsummer Norton, where the statistics effectively show that there is no crime in Midsummer Norton. Mm. And because the statistics show no crime, the police don't allocate any resource to us. There's no point to the police officers because I don't want them to I mean, the last statistics I saw when I went to one of the reviews was something silly like 12 drug-related crimes in a year. Mm. Now, we all know that that's not true, but that's the sort of statistics that are governing whether we get police resource. Having police, having street marshals and having regular reports going back to the police on a weekly basis say, here are the issues of antisocial behaviour and drugs and all the things we're having. Builds up that picture that we suddenly start to get resource. But that's a different story to what we're looking at here because this isn't going to, this is just a, a one-off hit. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So I think if we, if we, we seem fairly you know, uh, minded to, to go ahead with this, mm. just the just limited period and it's a, a reasonable cost that we can, we can afford. Um, uh, so main, maybe then all we need to do is to as a council contact the businesses to let them know this is happening, the, um, the, the, um, the pubs and, and clubs, and then and to make the um, marshals aware of their role of responsibility and ask them to introduce themselves to the businesses. I mean, it's, it's letting the businesses know, isn't it, that they are there. Mm -hmm. And then it's, the, it's what the marshals are doing. So they, they, they would know the limit of their their power and responsibility. Um, and it would just be up to them to introduce themselves to the businesses which are... Uh, Sorry, Mark, can I just throw in a quick question? I think yeah. we, we, Katie and I have talked about it some even. You also probably need to arrange a uh, building, Unit 14, some, some, somewhere right. where they can go and... They used to use the town hall, but obviously not. Yeah. I've put Unit 14 in the brief. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then oh. they get charged for the Okay. Right, so is that, is that does somebody want to propose? I did propose. You've proposed it. Mm -hmm. right. second, second. Yeah, no, I'll second that. Yeah. Yeah. Vote. Okay. Vote in favour. Oh, well, hang on. Oh. Let, let's look. Um, we seem to have a, a, an interest in this because I do run a venue in the town. Right. So it's probably better that I'm not involved in the decision. Okay, I'll, I'll do it then. Take, yeah. All right, I'll second So all in favour. Yeah. Yeah. So Can we, we talk then yeah. about people, like who to including all of that discussion. Mm. So what I can do, we don't, the, currently the Pubwatch scheme isn't running, but I can give you the, the Pubwatch contact list, okay. which will enable you to contact all the venues in the town. Mm. Mm. All right, good. Thank you.
Um, item 12, website proposals to note the tenders for creation of a new website over to Katie again. Yeah, so this is just that uh, you'll have seen the email that, that's gone around this week about um, having gone out to tender. Um, I attached the brief to it as well to say that um, we're looking at various website designers to come up with a more accessible, um, more secure website. And the tenders are now coming back in, so it's the last week of Christmas, so yeah, the deadline's the end of this week. Um, and I'll call a comms, strategy and comms working group um, to look at those proposals in the mm. new year. Um, yeah, so one thing I had is, um, shouldn't the request, right, that goes out to tender, be approved by council first, so council makes a request of what it thinks it needs, which I think is ideal, and um, yeah, and shouldn't maybe that could be for full I'd, I'd imagine if anything the, the communications working party would, we'll make would, would come and say look this this is what we think we need to provide and then council would approve that and we'll find someone to deliver it that's all isn't that a case of making sure that the officer responsible make sure that what we're putting out to bid is, is compliance well, with what we need no, it's a compliance so, issue isn't it is it well it's not compliant the current, current website's compliant um, that, that, that's not an issue. What it is, is um, what we're trying to achieve in terms of web presence, which um, I think is really important. So um, we need to decide what service we want to give the public. So um, having watched our web traffic for the last few years fairly closely and watched how people interact with it and spent a lot of time researching what other councils do, I think it's really important that the council decides what it wants to achieve from the website. now. When that website was originally envisaged, it would be a high maintenance website. That was actually regularly maintained, lots of news, create a large degree of interaction to sell mm -hmm. broadcast council services. Now, that's not going to work for a variety of reasons. It takes too much time and effort and expertise to update. So you tend to find a lot of the other councils have now paired back. Um, so good examples would be uh, so Wellingborough, Taunton, um, Quite a lot of websites. So what they've done is they, they've paired back. They've started to only really provide information about uh, essential council services, uh, easy access to documents, and they've made those things very easy to find, very simple. And they've dispensed with uh, other things like let's tell people all about events and nice crazy pictures and all the stuff that that website was meant to do. So that to me would be part of the strategy that council should probably agree. But looking at our resources, the general expertise, and also how much people actually interact with the website, I think that, that would probably be a better way forward if council agrees. That's not what it's saying. What it's saying is that they're going out to tender, and once they receive that, then that will be referred to the media and communications working party, mm. who will in turn bring it to this FNO committee. Mm. Um, how once 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 we've decided who we're looking at, we can start to work creatively with them to decide all the, the, the how we want it designed, what features we need, what we what we want to achieve from the website. Uh, this is just a very early stage, isn't it, of tendering sorry. process? I thought when we went out for a tender, you asked for what you want and then people tendered how much it would cost to deliver. Well, there, there, there is still the capability for us to go back and negotiate, so okay. we've got these however many people come back, I think I've got five at the moment. Right. So we can look at it and we can pair it back, we can decide what we want. One of them's got built a whole website for us to be able to look at and get a feel for it. Um, so it's, it's definitely the beginning of a process okay. of negotiation, but I wanted to get something done, something underway so that we could move forward rather than debating what, yeah. you know, it, it, it just takes forever. Yeah, yeah. Okay. 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 I think um, I think to say that, well, it's, it's, it's really good. I think that it's, it's definitely something that should go back to leading patients working party. We want to get it right. We yeah. want to make sure that the website is uh, <coughs> basically the big objectives will be to is fit for purpose, and, and it decides what its purpose is is the biggest one. Yeah, but, um, so that, that's we also really got, we need to be two way traffic. So one, and I think it's very different. Once you've established who you're going to work with, to get their input into how they how they can take the website as well as us telling them what we want, mm. there's this creative model that has to has to work. And you can't do that with a number of companies all through a, a bid process. Mm. You need to decide who you're comfortable to work with, ultimately who you think is going to help you design this amazing website. But we don't want, this is the thing, if we want amazing, so looking at, as I said earlier, a lot of the councils I've looked at mm. uh, up and down the country have realised that amazing is not what they're after. So 
A great example might be the Bath and Northeast Somerset website, which has no pictures on it basically. Uh, the website I was working on today, you might have used before, which is gov.uk, doesn't have any pictures on it, and um, doesn't have full accessibility, but they try their best. So what they've realised is they need to provide a service and they do it as well as possible. Um, whereas well, I want amazing. Right? <laughs> I want amazing. And uh, whatever your definition of amazing is, I want it. I mean, okay, there are problems with the existing one. Mm. To, just trying to find documents on the existing one is. I want it, <coughs> but I want it to encourage residents to want to be involved and understand what we're doing and participate. So, in that point of view, I want it to be amazing enough to well, it, attract you say that. that. I, said, I said that earlier, but the thing is, it, it's interesting, it's a really good viewpoint, and then it's something you take into account. But in order to um, attract residents, for a council website like that does come with issues, overheads, costs, maintenance, and it, it does become difficult. And there are other ways. So originally the website was envisaged as partly tourist information, partly broadcasting, all that sort of thing. If you look at the way uh, Froome do it, for instance, Froome have two websites using the same sort of theme. One to just provide um, agendas and council news, and one which they've done, which is much more like Visit Froome, and they look very, very similar. So these are questions we should answer, and we're all in violent agreement about it, but I think it's important we ask what we want, because if you ask the wrong people about a website, you might end up spending quite a lot of money on something which looks great, but it's difficult to maintain, and we maintenance have, is most have, of the cost. We have gone out to tenders, I don't know they are paid today, and here they are. We have gone out to tenders, we deal with council websites. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Know, so I think, uh, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that's all in place, so and all these business. discussions can happen. Yeah. Once we get the tenders in, and we do yeah. with people who are yeah. truly interested in the communications industry, yeah, yeah, yeah. mm. we've got the knowledge. No, I was just going to say we're, we're having our website done at the moment as well, and I don't know if they will sort of reply to a tender like ours, but it was a sort of block work, depending on hours, depending on what you want it to do, mm. and that you go through that, mm -hmm. and you know, price goes up or down depending on. Yeah what you want really, so I think that can be hammered out. Exactly. I mean, there are basically Obviously, pro forma town mm -hmm. council websites now, which are just fairly vanilla, but yeah. smart and functional websites, which means they're very look at the information. When they come in, can't really yeah. evaluate them, but the, if the programme meets a whole meeting, range of different, different ones. Yeah. Okay. So. And that would be, you'll, you'll put that on. I will organise the strategic communications working group in the news. That's good. Right. What's next then? Oh look, it's oh, the, uh, the the discussion of the budget. Item 13. Again, you can make it up. I saw it. 12A. <laughs> uh, 12B. Um, right, so, um, uh, Kate's in position for the computer. Before we um, do that, Cheryl had put forward, um, very kindly put a lot of effort to this, uh, just having started on the town council. So, can I invite Cheryl to just sort of to take us through your proposals, your. Okay. Thank you, Chair. Um, so obviously, Monday before the council meeting was my first meeting, and a lot of things were suggested at that meeting over the budget. And I think we were looking at anything from 19 to 30 percent, something set, and all what type of suggestions you were looking for. And um, clearly, I think council wasn't in a position to make a decision. There were issues around possible liability with the community trust and with the um, council project for both the town hall and the sewing centre and what could be potential liabilities for that. There was clearly um, preferences expressed by certain councillors for certain projects and I felt that the best thing to do would be to kind of like try and bring as much together as possible and at least put a stake in the sand but try and bring down the percentage increase in preset. So the first thing I did was I went through all of Kate's lovely notes, every single note, every single line item, I went through all of that. I also did some research. And what you should see, I think it's on the shared drive, isn't it? Kate, it has, I, hopefully the changes will say. But I put quite a lot of notes, and then I thought, you know what, I'll just put it into a presentation so you can see how my thought processes worked. So most of the information is on that proposal, if you read it through. But there are other things that obviously haven't been allocated, and there's been some questions that I've raised in there. So I would value, obviously, the input of the officers, because as far as I'm aware, I'm at least six years out of date on things like legislation and everything else, so I don't know what's current. 
I think one of the things that has concerned me, which perhaps not necessarily today you can comment on, was the aim and pension fund deficit. Given what the actuarial report said the town council should be paying, not just next year, but in previous years, and actually the town council has shown in its figures it's paid a thousand pound more. So I think somebody needs to look at that. Why we paid more than we should have done based upon the actuarial report. So there were so for the most part there have been some savings um, that I've made. I also stripped out quite a lot of the projects that were suggested by the strategic working party and I've explained the reason behind that in in PowerPoint. That doesn't mean to say that they've gone completely there may be provision in the professional fees for consultancy or something like that. The one thing that um, I did find, which I think is mainly responsible for bringing that preset down to 14.75% increase, was that um, if you look at the lease, the draft lease for the town hall, when community trusts take it over, they're paying the rent to the town council, not the town trust. The agreement is between the town council and community trust because the town trust doesn't take ownership for two years. So that put £5,000 worth of income into the top line, and that really has emphasised slightly bringing down the preset because that income is being used to, to, to contribute towards the expenditure. Um, so basically, I'm commending the budget as it stands for tweaking, and my suggestion is that if anybody wants to add more expenditure in, that they propose where it should be taken away from, so you have a balance. Because if everybody's just proposing more expenditure, then you still sort of haven't reached the end of the budgeting process today, which you really need to do. So, as far as I got is in the PowerPoint, uh, where the savings are, why those savings have been, have, have, have been suggested, and then also additional expenditure, because there were, if you go through Kate's line item, she was very clear, I haven't put a figure in here, I need council to supply it, so I won't do what I did. <laughs> um, and that includes things like the website, uh, it, it, it includes other things. So all in the spreadsheet, every box where I've got a question or a note, or maybe there are still answers required, is highlighted in yellow. Okay, so those are the ones where you can see where I've changed things. Um, anything that's highlighted in a different colour font in figures, that's also been changed. Having said that, from where we were to where we are now, I'd just like to throw in a few more suggestions that might give you some more wiggle room. And again, this is up to the RFO to advise. Uh, but I noticed that you've got the new Summer Valley rediscovered, which is on the final page of the spreadsheet. If you look on the right hand side, it's note number 109. And it says earmark reserves. So that is an earmark reserve potentially, cap capital expenditure. Um, I noticed that you've also got three capital projects. Wellow Brook, Garden of Friendship, and St. Chad's Well for 1,000. So, my question would be to the RFO is it possible, and also there's notice boards 4,000, is it potentially possible to use, for instance, still money from the MR reserves against those capital items of expenditure, which means that they would essentially come out of your revenue budget? You can't budget. use it on notice boards. You can't use it on notice boards. It's not on the Okay, it's worth a try. Um, so, are there any projects in there that potentially SIL or other remark reserves can be used in our study? There are some. Okay. Right. Hmm. Again, that one then. Um, the only other thing that I would say is um, that obviously, as a precautionary measure, I haven't put any interest in from the uh, savings account the six yeah, six six well, the moment the, the moment six hundred thousand comes out, that will come out January, February or drop. But is there any potentially interest like three or four thousand pounds that could be worth well, eight 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 a month? I don't know. I that's none of I don't know until the Right. In that case then I don't see that there's any further wiggle room. Um, and so therefore 
are commending you a proposal that's a stake in the ground, that hopefully takes account of the fact it gives you 10,000 extra for new services. It doesn't address giving staff and consultancies. It takes that money out until such time as personnel review with the town council staff what should constitute a staff member's responsibilities, what should constitute a consultant's responsibilities, how does that relate to how we um, deal with the town trust and how does that relate to what happens with the community trust because at one point there was a proposal to pay staff for the community trust. But unless and until there is some type of strategic review on that through personnel committee and a really good chat with these lovely ladies who are still new to the job, I mean it's very clear that the town council is going to be taking on an awful lot of stuff going forwards. It's really important that the town council has got a complement of staff with the necessary skills to support all those activities. And I think that is from the point you then look at, so are we going to spend money on consultants? Are we going to spend money supporting other organisations in terms of staff? How are we going to do that? Because there's no plan at the moment. And this was the best I could come up with at three o'clock in the morning um, to give you new services a contingency, which I think from talking with um, the Mayor, it doesn't have to be the Town Hall Capital Projects contingency, it could just be in a separate code called Projects contingency, so it, it gives you some wiggle room for the Soma Centre and the Town Hall as we talked about at the last meeting what happens if there's a liability. Um, it does give you some wiggle room for consultants if needed, I did take out the consultant for the strategic work of the because I can send it out. There's no point in paying five grand for consultant when you've got the skills on board. Um, so I think I've tried to get the best to put a stake in the ground. Um, and then I would just suggest is that if you're going to wiggle it around, if you're going to take with one hand, you've got to give back with another. You see what I mean? So if you're going to make a proposal to add in, £10,000 for security, where are you going to take the £10,000 from? Overall, and this is just looking at the amount of um, preset and um, tax paid by residents just to the town council without police, fire or anything in, if my calculations are correct, I don't know if they are, please tell me if they're wrong, I'm going to take 33 pence increase with a 14 point seven mark. So, <coughs> No, but um, if, if we assumed it was the old tax base, it would be 33 p a week. Okay. So there you go. Yeah, thank you, Cheryl. Um, mm -hmm. Does anybody want to make any comments on Cheryl's proposal at this time? Well, thank you, Cheryl. Brilliant. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, a lot of work went in it. Um, and it's, uh, yeah, there's a lot of items which I don't think I'd have thought to, to review, which you did really well. Oh, I'm really glad. Nice. I'm really glad that we managed to um, finish. Oh, sorry, go and keep it. <laughs> We're not ready for that yet. No. Maybe take the lead out and plug it back in. Okay. Um, can I um, break for a toilet uh, while we sort of the computer? Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I need to draw. <coughs> <it. coughs> I might just have a bite. <coughs> Popcorn's always so <laughs> Martin's, um, as chair, has, uh, has made an adjournment. Is that no, the that's the question. Do, do we wait? Do I just we have to wait. To yeah. Who's got the M&M's over there? Oh. <laughs> 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 no, that's not. That's just a... Don't mind me. Hobnob hop, hop, gate. I'm going to try and hop up again. I can't tell you what's been recorded. I'm going to make a... Um, 
so much feedback about and the fact that you know the strategy working party talked long and hard about this and we thought well a way to use the summer center productively would be a youth club so if some provision could be made for that i think it'd be amazing yeah. am i right in saying that you did make provision for some sort of fundraising sorry we're, not, we're moving into a debate now aren't we i'm just asking a question yeah. okay sorry i'm just saying did you make provision for fundraising assistance in that budget because your slides I left said the starting costs at 155,000 is proposed by the RFA. Right. The same. And that was for um, someone to look at grants. Right. However, I did, I think, in the notes say, is it possible to build in other activities to that, not just grants? Because if you've got somebody with business development skills, uh -huh. then they could potentially help with some of the other areas, like, for instance, the NDP or the Strategy Working Party or whatever. They've got that type of skill set. Okay. Is that something that we are looking to budget for then, Katie? Or Kate, do you know? Because I think you mentioned it to me first, and I thought it was a great idea that if we can get some external assistance to help us with being better at seeking grants, and also that expertise can be shared across the trusts, mm -hmm. that might put the whole council and its trusts in a much better position. And we don't have that expertise in house at the moment. No, but you told me to go away and get. Um, tenders for a business consultant to look at the community trust as a whole, which I've done, right. and for a grant fundraiser, which I've done. So okay. those are out. Right. So well, when I've got bids in, I'll well, share them. I don't realise that. I didn't need to tell you. Something. No, no, no. But, 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 that was that was decided. At that, the is that, that is something we're kind of budgeting for. That there would be a cost associated. With that. I'm just checking. Was it? Yeah. yeah. I thought it was. I just wanted to double check. Yeah. That's great. I'm not going to ask you a question, please, Chair. I'm not. I'm not. Should I ask you a no, not really. You can, can I not say something if you want to move over there? Yeah. Uh, okay. I don't know. I tried, I'm advised by the clerks to whether the other councillors can interject it. You can suspend standing orders at any moment. You can invite people to. Right, okay then. Definitely we don't. So basically, the council spent 11 grand last year for raising for grant funding and they got no grant funding. Yeah. Okay. So they spent 11 grand last year for grant funding and they got no grant funding. Yeah. Okay. So they spent 11 grand last year for grant funding so I'm just going to say, if you're going to do that and fork out money, you need to have some sort of contingency. They're like, also, no win, no fee, but not really. Yeah. I mean, it's going to have to be, they're going to be doing work, 
but you count that like, eleven thousand pounds yeah. and they delivered nothing. Mm. Nothing. Yeah. It was yeah. One question I said, I remember we mentioned that before. Mm. Whenever a grant bid fails, you're, I believe you, there's a lot of feedback. There should be a lot of feedback about why it's failed and what you should do in future. I've been told about that the lottery grants and other stuff. Is that not true? No, not for everyone. Not for everyone. Because I thought the point is to try and learn from why your grants have failed and then you can adapt your policies to suit the grants in the future. I'd heard. I'm no grant expert, which is why maybe we need external help. Mary? No, I just saw it. I just saw it. Right. So, I'm going to the I've just put anything in the line, I haven't got a line in there. So I'm going to put it in the line. The little column here, I've put here, I'm going to put a yes or a no. I'm going to go through this quite quickly so we know which bit you're. So 155 salaries, that's an increase of 25,000. Um, you don't need to go proposing the second, I'm just going to ask a question and whisper and whisper it. Say yes um, for a grants officer, um, or if not a grants officer, another admin officer. Um, because I have a friend who's a clerk who has the same preset, and she was amazed. We only have four members of staff, she has seven. So I am recommending. So I'm going to put a yes there. I'm just going to whiz it out. Which, can you tell which council that was? It's always good to compare. Uh, it's near Milton Keynes. Near Milton Keynes, okay. It's just because, you know, <laughs> it's not really our council is kind of. What's, what's the word we call for? Is it a triumvirate? Yeah, yeah, triumvirate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <coughs> Should that not be more, though, than what you've just said? It can be. Well, yeah, well, it, I've put an extra 25,000 on top of what you paid. So and will that. Because ne next year the national living wage goes up, yeah. doesn't it? Will that. Well, internally for me, that bumps so everyone else up in my business. So well, would that be the same here, within reason? Where, where? I know you're above that, but <laughs> do you know what I mean? But I don't know if everyone else who would might come in. Yeah, so I can change it here. I'm just sort of putting it out there. If we haven't got enough staff, we need more staff. Yeah, so that's so another 25 grand is not a lot. No. Well, that was originally for a fundraising assistant, so that's, that's a contract. That's what I'm saying. So, if we do get a contract to enter a fundraising assistant, mm -hmm. that doesn't leave a lot for a full time admin assistant yeah, or a part time admin. Part -time admin. Yeah, so, it's only to help Joe. Wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't that suggestion have to come through a staffing committee? Yeah, okay, sorry. So, you need to fit in there. So, you have to put a yes in there. So, that's the national insurance is related to yes. That's a yes because that's all pension. Payroll administration is codex, I've got a yes there, um, because that's what we pay to do the payroll, and that's the price for next year. Training, I've actually kept 7,000. Um, I know Cheryl has taken it down to 2,000. Um, I should tell you the reason why. Um, I've kept it at 7. Um, within our contract, it does say, the council shall be responsible for any costs associated with any training and development that considers necessary. I am doing the community governance in February. I have signed up, I have been accepted, I have, so I will be starting in February. Um, so there will be a proposal coming to contribute two and a half thousand a year for the next two years. Within Kate's com contract is, and that's part of the interview, is the council pay for her silver. It's only two thousand thousand pounds. That's half the budget gone already. If there are two, there are two conferences, national conferences, as officers, we can attend. If we both go to both conferences, that's two thousand pounds. So you know you've wiped out your budget figure straight away. Um, so it's better to put money in there than an allocated. Yes, I am doing uh, an arm, you know, you can say no, you know, to various things, but put money in put there, if you don't spend it, then you can transfer it. It's easier to do it that way now than to try and find money in somewhere else. So I'm there. I, I won't put a yes or no. Well, I'm actually, yeah, I'm saying that that needs to stay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I agree, I agree. agree. That's why I'm using the line of seven. Yeah. Um, so Anyone disagree with that? Because I'm, as far as I'm concerned, we've got a new clerk, deputy clerk, they need to be supported. Mm -hmm. with, with, development training and 
we need yes. the budget to do it. I agree. Well, I think our, our first our first priority is probably for Katie to get Silka. 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 And that will make me a proper, that will make me a general part, that will give us the general part. Competence. Competence. Yes. And maybe competent. No, exactly. But that is obviously the first priority. You know. yeah. Whatever we can do to um, uh, uh, make that happen would be. Yeah, the £200 is in there because the previous, I'll have a look at my notes here. The previous block signed up just for a year contract and didn't um, and it didn't pay it, it didn't leave with a company and then we had a three year contract, you got the back. Finishes in 2025, so that's in there. We win it, we don't use it, we pay for it. and substance, um, mileage 200. I'm, put, I'm putting yeses, you know, if I put those, no, put work where. I've only put 400, you know, work where those days, you know, does he need, does he need new shoes and stuff? Um, 19, I haven't put anything for that. Miscellaneous staff costs, you shouldn't actually have, actually have miscellaneous staff costs. Water rates, um, share the doubled. We've actually paid the full rates this year anyway. Because it gets paid twice a year, we've actually paid those rates. Um, um, right, so that's nothing. No, so it's right, 300, 300. So that should be 400, because we've paid 372. Well, I'll, I'll check this because I'll leave those blank for a moment. But we've paid the full rates for water rates. Um, okay. One is for the allotments. So you have to get, if you change, you have to go to the community association. The town environment, that's for the holidays. We pay one, we pay the water rates on the holidays. I don't know, and I'll try to solve that problem again. Uh, rent payable is um, mm. rent that we pay. You haven't put me to put yeses in. <coughs> the, rent, the rent is what we pay. The water rates are the. What's the rent for? Where's the rent uh, 22 is unit 14. Right. Um, but I put it in there, but I've put it's, it's high 12, 12, twice a month, a 12 pound a session for open house. They don't charge for the office, which equates. To that figure a year, but if the office is moved to the service end of unit 14, we no longer be required to put, we don't know we're moving, so again it's something. Okay. Um, the Weller Brook, that's to the Dutch Union, so we pay for the Weller Brooks and that. Hang on a second, can I go back? Sorry. It takes me a while to catch up because it's quite slow. Mm. It's slow I was going to say, so the rent payable thing, what was that we just said? The rent payable, that is what we pay unit 14 for the open service. Right, for when you use when the council uses it. Yeah. 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 Yes. Right. Okay. They don't charge us for the office space. They just charge us Mondays and Thursday afternoon. Well, that's fair enough because it's a pretty small office space you've got. Okay, that's fine. Well, that would, <coughs> would go up wherever we relocated. Yes. Yeah, so that might be the case. Somerset would be expecting I'm more. And the oh, time. I, that, we may go somewhere else. I don't know. Yeah. I, I wrote this back in like, September. Oh, yeah. But then if you could, like, so I'm just going to say though, it's like, I'm sorry to go over these things because I do struggle to keep up, but if that line, 4013 rent payable, which has nothing on it, is that right? What am I looking at? There's so, four. There's one rent payable. Oh, there's the one rent payable. Yes, yes, sorry. So it says 12.50, right? That's right. But we would probably expect, expect that to be, correct me if I'm wrong, £4,000 because that's what the rent on the town hall will be when no, the council moves back. That's £12.50 is what we pay unit 14. Yes. For the use. But if the office were to move into the office in the town hall, we'd expect it to be £4,000, wouldn't we? Because that's what. Why? Why are we paying £4,000? Because that's in the business plan that Caroline made. That's what she said. She'd expect the council to rent the room. It depends where the cave means that's the unit 14 ongoing well, right. provision for the town town. council. But then you're also expecting the community trust to pay us five thousand pounds. Oh god. So it, 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 I think I, I, yeah, I I think that's an area that needs to be explored as we go on as to what the business model should look like. Okay. Fair enough. Do you know what I probably should have mentioned it? Next time I'm stuck, I'm just gonna say nothing. <laughs> No, no, you're right to raise it, Gordon, because when we have talked about it before, whether it's the service centre, you know, the service centre that the rents people pay, we, we were looking at a higher figure, weren't we? We yeah. were expecting 
because uh, the rent would go to the um, community trust to manage the um, particular to the community trust oh. to manage the buildings. Which mm -hmm. didn't um, Cheryl point out that if we were renting a room in the town hall, that money would obviously go to the to ourselves and let the community. Uh, the summer centre because that's owned by the trust because you know because the council owns the town hall mm -hmm. so effectively it would literally be paying itself for paying so right yeah because but you might not pot, you might want to pop in a maintenance pot if it's being right. thrifty right. but because yeah. it um, owns the town hall yeah i'm reading on <laughs> we haven't got anything for cleaning sanitation hygiene or refuse but seeing the information that's come out from ways this week um we may we don't do it anywhere but they're actually back insurance on those bills. Yes, yes. Uh, so, and also, and so I'm hoping to delete it. Um, Have we already accidentally overpaid, sorry, what? Yes. Right. So yes. you've actually, it's did it's we get that money back? back? No. Oh well, goodness, well, so do, do we know how much money we've accidentally lost? Ask for clarification. So in the draft agreement that the very kind sent me, it says that the community trust pay the town council the rent and they also pay what's called the insured risk. And the agreement states very clearly, it hasn't been signed yet, the agreement states very clearly that whoever owns the asset insures the building, but that that agreement means that there is an amount paid by the community trust to cover that insured amount. That was what I took away from the, from the draft agreement. We were told by the charity commission that if, say, the community town trust was responsible for the town hall, they pay the time insurance. We would obviously have our own That's fine, but yeah. if we look through those documents that we had for the town trust, um, I'm not sure I saw 
the building's insurance in there. Yeah. So and I'm, not, I'm, I'm sure that you're right that they should be paying it. I just want to say, can we be sure that they are paying it yeah, before we cancel our own? Yes, in there. So can we close and break it down? Our insurance has gone up by a thousand pounds because the refurbishment's gone over twelve months. They're saying this another thousand pounds. Of course, and the other thing is that we don't want is to is to take that off of there and then find that we get another grant application from the town trust because they can't afford to pay the insurance. No, so I'm keeping it at 44,000. Sorry, can we just, can we get through that? Because all the, the buildings, these assets are in a, a, diff, a different aren't really. So, really? so the Orchard Hall is is a Baines yeah. owned and the activities run in, in it are community trust. No, the Orchard Hall is leased to the town council. You sub lease it to the town trust, the you sub lease it to the community trust. So who's paying the buildings and contents for that? Town Trust. The, the Town Bain, Trust Bain's, is... Bain's pay it, then the Town Trust or Community Trust, we pay Bain's. Who? Can we just trust the Town Trust? The Town Trust aren't involved in the... No, Town Trust aren't. Trust. That's just one, that's the one that it is. So, so the Community goes, Trust... Bain's, town Council Community Trust for the Orchard Hall. The Town Trust aren't involved. Yeah, so Community Trust pay the buildings and contents insurance, right? And but, so, it's in, but it's in your... Yeah, so, and then so for the Soma Centre, you're saying the community association that are leasing it at the moment pay the buildings and contents insurance, yeah, yeah. right? But the town trust isn't responsible for doing that, even though it owns the building. That isn't responsible for paying the building insurance. I, okay, I think that the town trust pays for the buildings insurance, and the community association pays for the contents. Yeah, mm. that would seem. But the building, the building is in the townhouse insurance. That shouldn't. Right. But it's also, okay. regardless of it's killer shouldn't, I think it's prudent to leave that amount in there yeah. until such time as we've established that everything is insured. But I, but I but only once, for, one, one insurance only once. Oh, actually, only once. Yeah. But at yeah. the moment, we, we, <coughs> we, we, we're in danger of either duplication yeah. or big gaps. Yeah. So we need to. You, you live in there, I can't hmm. talk to insurance companies until after the budget is agreed. Okay. Because they only talk 90 days there. So then, then finally, then the town hall, <laughs> which is owned by the town council, <laughs> and it's going to be leased to the uh, community yeah. trust, and they're being expected to pay the bills and contents on contents. that. Or contents. is it? So we'll pay our own. Right, so we'll pay, but right. Okay. Council yeah. pay. But was that happening before? Did you? Or is the community yeah. trust? Yes, the council paid well the buildings being. insurance. Yeah. That's what we've had all this, all this um, unoccupancy and all the rest of yeah. it. All these loopholes we've got to. Right. on top of the £2,000 you've got for stationery and... This is just the charge to have the copy. That's just the, that's the higher cost of, a, of the copy, okay. Yes, that's about that's right. is, uh, That is the lease of the machine and then the charges, the mono charges and the charges. Okay. I'm obviously, obviously I've had to estimate it because I don't know how much photocopy we're doing. Yeah, that's fine. We don't need any hardware in terms of laptops or. No, you're all fully. Yeah. Have you got new laptops? I said no at the beginning, but then I'm. Because I will use my personal one. Okay, good. Um, everything's going online, so the survey is going. Um, so we've just bought um, the asset that was mentioned in the internal report. We've just bought the asset module, so I'm working on way to put all the assets on. And we're going to the cloud-based version. Um, we're talking about Realtors, the accountancy software. Right? Not until April, because they don't to get the system at the moment. So the pension 
didn't edit it, Cheryl was taken down. Um, I kept the same because Joe has done quite intensive training on Joe is mentioned lady. She's done quite intensive training. This is the biggest baby we've given her. And then also if you're taking on more scarf, you're gonna you're gonna have to do a pension allocation anyway. Yeah. Um, is it worth um, is it worth trying to find out what the correct figure is? We pay the correct figure for the pension deficit. Yeah. Right. Okay. But is it worth trying to yeah. see how to calculate? I don't know. It's just when two people are saying there's different it's numbers. Very, very complicated. Joe's done. I listened into one. Right. I've got a lot of so we should ask Joe. But then, if you employ more staff, you get you do have quite high pension contributions. Thank you very much. Um, mm. <laughs> Yeah. Well, we're not looking at employing more staff. Well, I was going to say, this is a bit of an assumption. What we're looking at is, um, is the grant funder, which wouldn't be a, a pay the staff. Yeah, a contract. So basis. we're not, not, but anyway, so that's it. The pension deficit would be given by the pension company. Yeah, well, we could, yeah, that might um, be another thing to discuss at the Yeah, so I'll, well, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about that at the moment then. Um, so I was thinking, we're talking to a lot of people, but um, that £800 is, I'm going to put a yes by that because that is the quarterly um, inspection by Baines. Baines do it quarterly, um, and they're actually cheaper than other companies, so we'll just start with Baines. Um, so these figures, I'm just going to skim through, um, because, you know, town environment, you know, what's the food's wet ground, you know, equipment maintenance, you've got playground there, I definitely yeah. think it might might be worth investigating a little bit more to see if it could be a sill project because no, sill it's, not, it's, not sil, it's, it's not I did I did write to the sill monitoring officer and I asked a whole bunch of questions and it, their website is fairly vanilla but basically it's set by government and sill money can be used for Kate's instance. already said you've looked into it and it can't be used yeah. for. So a thousand pounds that's the same as last year. So that's the tap here. So you're leaving, the four, you're leaving the four in for the... Um, I'm leaving the four in for the... Right. I haven't put a, a yes yeah, put it in for next year. Yes, right. The furniture and equipment for the town environment, I think you double, I think you actually double the people. Because you've got a thousand pounds in there, and then further down, you've got a thousand pounds in capital projects for the town environment. But so I'll leave that at the moment. Property maintenance, um, I said that should need to be cross please mm -hmm. but, but we haven't allocated anything against it this year and we haven't spent against it, so I think it's gone a bit against a different cost item. So it was L sixty fifty four, was it? Right. 54, so is that for all of the assets? Central services is the obvious involved because central services is, is staff for the office. Sorry, so, sorry, just going back so so if we haven't spent any money on property maintenance where is the money coming from to maintain the properties? Well, because we're, we're not maintaining it. We're just in Unit 14, aren't we? Well, th that worries me in itself, that we're not maintaining any properties. <laughs> we're, just, um, we're just tenants there, aren't we? We're just renting the, the, the yeah, couple yeah, of but, so we so, Well, this, again, so either the town trust is responsible for the maintenance of the properties, mm. in yeah. which case... It's not Unit 14. Going, sorry? We're talking about Unit 14 now. It's all about B. Oh right, not everything, not, not all everything. the assets. Okay. Just unit 14, right, would be now. Central so services is just like our office, really. So ah. the central. Oh, okay, I see. Oh, I see. Right. Okay. okay, I think that's right. throwing me. Oh. So property maintenance, I'm going to skip to, because you, that's, um, that's the same as last year. So you have to pay 
That's Stone Barn and Pillow Road that you've reappointed at four council. So those figures are in there. You, you reappointed them, I just took the wrong one because I'm skipping the So that's, that's all um, River Barn and Pillow Road. So you reappointed them at the last couple of weeks ago, so they're in there. Your bank charges, the bank charges. Van you know, that, you know that's, that's, although it's a van allowance, that's really. MOT, tax, petrol, 5,000 is probably quite high, mm -hmm. so you can't, you can't reduce that. Licences, this is a strange one, apparently one year you bought a PPL licence for £100. Pounds. So that's why it's back in, again, that can come out. Um, but it would only be, it would be the town trust, the community trust that would need a PPL licence, not us. Yeah. So What's a PPL again? That. Sorry? What's a PPL again? It's, um, it's an entertainment license. Yeah. Right, okay. So they have so some of them, and yeah. they have to get extras when they need them, I think. Is it is the allowing you to if, use it? Yeah. Is it I think they may have it. Was, well, PPL and PRS have yes. merged together now, so they're one yeah. one organisation. So legal fees, I've kept the 5,000, tail to the ground for 1,500, but lawyer's fees and solicitor's fees are 3,400 pounds an hour. That's probably three, three hours legal fees. I think the town has all the ways that have some legal fees in all this lease behind sort of that. Again, that's the figure. You can pay with um, those figures are set in stone because those are your external and your internal audit fees. Candidacy support we no longer have. Again, this is more this is more um, photography work share will put it up to ten thousand, I think to eight because it's various reasons. Um, memorials yeah, you know, got quite a of, again that can come out. You've got that's still in there, although I have got notes saying we move we move on to four, that's the medium and long term strategy. Mayor's announced two hundred thousand pounds, so that's that's probably yes. Because I guess it's on You have to make allowances for mayors. Yes. Um civic expenses, I'm not quite sure because okay. I'm can I ask a question? Sorry, before you whiz off, whiz on again. So, am I understanding this? The legal and professional fees, 4059, which is eight grand, and the uh, uh, legal fees, 4055. Yeah, they're, they're duplicated. All oh, right. For some, so, reason, for some reason, you've got legal fees and legal and professional fees. I didn't set up the codes. Ah, right. No, okay, so I see. So okay, so we don't really know. Is, is more, it's all, they're both consultants, they're both legal so those, mm. you know, <coughs> I don't know, the legal fees are going to be. Mm. But they're, they're charged for your formula because I looked at And that's like sorting out leases. Yeah. Can I, um, I hate to interrupt, um, but I'm going to. I'm really sorry. No, see, I know we're going through everything, which is great and we're going at the speed of light, which is wonderful as well, but if we please buy something like, say, the medium and long-term strategy, mm. which I the, which the ironically, the, I was going to say, should we take, just take it out? Yeah. Well, I'm just, I'm asking everybody. I'm just saying because it was... Well, I'm yeah. just saying, just reading through it, so the ones that yeah. yes is on. Of You're course, going to take it like, I just want to check. Yes, so. yes, I think, yes, you can, you can play. Right. I think, I think, I think, it, I think it's, at this stage, it's right to highlight these things in red. Right. And now we've got the red ones to look at after. Right. Okay, that's fine. Just check what it is. So, yeah. so the that's civic, civic expenses, that's for your civic awards. I don't quite know why, because you've always got civic awards. Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, well, I'll leave that for a moment. I'm also losing to it. Harbour meeting rooms is the heart of this place. Um, so I'm going to put a yes there, but then when you're back in town hall, you can use the town hall. But then it, in the assembly, you know, you need something, you need this. Meeting room expenses, I'm actually going to delete it. Because you don't have any meeting room expenses. It's only 50 pounds. Grants, this is, we're getting to grants soon enough. Right, so the only, the, so the suggestion is, is to reduce that to 20,000. So you, because you only do grants now twice a year. Um, we are, I think in January, you're going to have to do a publicity or notice or something to say we only now do it twice a year, otherwise <coughs> people are going to be 
people will miss out. So like the Carnival Club, the Carnival Club will see it in there, oh, can have the money, can we have the money? I don't know, you still need to apply for a grant. But you can do it in January and July, so they need to get it in in July. So I think in January, something's gonna, something's gonna go out and say, we now need to do grants twice a year. Yeah. You've got to get, you've got to get it in, you won't be that's all I had over Yeah. So I, so, I, so I suggested it should be, as we're only doing it twice a year, it should be £10,000 <coughs> twice a year. Um, this current year we're over, but we did start off £7,000 down on our £19,000 budget on day one. Mm. So I think two, two events, each has £10,000 budget to allocate in grants, I think is perfectly reasonable. And it's not excessive for the public to, to stomach that we're deciding where their money goes. So I'm not, I'm not putting yeses by these at the moment because these are lots of questions. This was part is you didn't have this year because you had no staff, are you doing the next year? The 4,000 is your medium communication which actually needs to be moved because the morning grants. So that's your, that's your newsletters, your publication of meetings and, and stuff like that. Carnival Association I've put up to 10 because they've asked for 10,000. Was eight. Um, do you still do an arts program? Yeah. Um, do you still do an arts festival? Yeah. Um, for Christmas fair. Christmas. Do you still do a Christmas fair? Yeah. Remember, if you want to. Remember, it's for HL. Well, you might. Uh, Remember, the main state charge for Remember, it's for Remembrance Day. They charge it. Remember, they charge for Remembrance. Do you do any fair? Uh, the Civic Circle, no. yes, no. we ended up spending about eight nine hundred pounds this year on our Civic. Christmas lights, last year you put in ten, it only cost you three and a half. I've put in five because again, we've had notification through that the contribution is, is going to be reduced, so you cost again. We don't know. So but we've five. got a meeting on something like the 4th of January, so actually we will know a cost mm -hmm. yeah. potentially by the 8th. Yeah, Christmas trees put in four because that's what cost us this year. Youth projects and council, that's gone up <coughs> because you have you had a two year contract and each year is twenty four thousand. And within that contract it is there was a provision that they could ask to increase the contract levels. They have asked it to be increased by twenty by five percent. That's the new figure. You don't, you don't have to agree to it, but it was. Um, That's Youth Connect Southwest. Yeah. The 10,000 is that extra mm. youth provision of the youth club. Do you do a summer fair? 15,000 is the um, community trust grant. And then there's the you know, you've got the town trust grant. Loan charges, I'm putting yeses there because they're mm. correct. It's so community trust grant and rate. Is that one of the ones that goes? Because we changed the figures a couple of meetings ago. Just checking. Um, so it got put in red. This is the fourth time, so I've been playing the figures. This is where I think you've doubled, you've doubled up. You've doubled up because you've got capital project in Wellowbrook, Garden of Friendship, St. Chad. This is your 50,000, which we need to discuss. Yeah, IT upgrade. Um, I don't think you really need. Some of that discovered, I do need to put an extra line because you've got your 5,000 which you committed to the five, the work, the summer value for the stuff in the town yeah. You just committed another 5,000. So that's a yes in there. Um, so that we would be gaining, this is, I haven't put anything in um, for the change, do you want something in there? And your, and your, um, okay, and your speed indicator device, I'm going to put a yes there because the battery, you may need a new battery, so I'll just put a yes in there. So that brings it down to 565, which is 18.75 increase. And again, we haven't talked about it, so is that fine? No, it's pretty good, beautiful. Okay. Um, uh, and then there's another question. Cheryl then also wanted 5,000 in for electric costs. At the moment, Bain's then charged about 30,000 costs now. Don't tell me. They need to pass the cost down with this money. No. They no, 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 no. Sorry, but they don't charge you for the four-year election. If you have a by-election, yeah, they don't charge the money. 
Brilliant. We've yeah. never had one, so really? I don't think. Charged yeah. nice. I asked. 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 I can I ask about the Summer Valley Rediscovered? I thought they were meant to be investing money. Mm, they are. But we have to but sort we, of match fund it a bit. A match yeah. sort of thing. Yeah. Okay. Is it that they're yes, doing more of the kind of projects and we're doing a little bit of maintenance to show that we can... Yeah, I think it's just a mm. contribution from the places that are benefiting to kind of show the, the willing that we want to make our place a, a better place as well. It's no, I just, it's, I just it's, it's a bit of a token gesture that now we pay compared to the overall. Yes. Well, and I was wondering because I know it was what 1.6 million they had for all the uh, yeah. stone or something. Yeah. Yeah. So not much. Oh, okay. It's contribution. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Talking figures. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it. Yeah. I need to a break off from it as well. Yeah. Sorry. When is our meeting scheduled to finish? Oh, just what is it? Oh, is it a two-hour nice. meeting? Oh, that's it. You didn't want to go home. Before. No, we no. 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 So we've we still got half an hour. Well, if it's gone and dusted in ten minutes. I think it's going to have an eye. It's really, it's very useful to look at all the stuff. So we need to do a little bit of the Thank you. Okay, thanks, thanks Thank you for what you did. See you later. Up for grass. Well, no, or, no, 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 not necessarily. Red is a maybe. Or a discussion. Red is coming okay. from the strategy working party. So the thing is. But then I'm red. So I presented the budget on Halloween, which is all in black and things. Mm -hmm. It then went out. Then the strategy party came in with. Especially working while I came back with various students, which I changed with red. I then had various other changes, so I just changed the red, one thing is in red, so when you came back for the second time, I knew you should be like Okay, so sorry, sorry about that. <coughs> so I'm going to go back down to the easy bit. Go well, on, let's get rid of Let's sort this chart out. Can you have me return to the Pardon? I mean, what, um, so can I can I uh, say something? Um, have we got the fifteen thousand for the community trust? Is that gone? That's done there, right? So that's um, the wages, basically, isn't it, for the community trust that we are we as a council have been paying since it started, and it hasn't gone up. There. Yeah. It's fifty. Well, it's fifteen we've been paying. The, um, it covered um, up, up, went towards Alex, the manager of the trust's uh, wages, and I think also subsidised Beth. Um, the cultural consultant a little bit. Alex's wages have climbed in that time. We're still paying the same. I know with the community uh, trust, the idea is that it gradually funds itself. But that's the contribution we've been paying, which is goes towards. It's not a grant for events, things like. That. It's a grant for his wages to to manage it and run it in the same way that we're paying the town trust, I suppose, at the moment. Although there isn't anybody that's receiving that. Really. Um, that's the first thing. The um, so I would. I would suggest that's changed from red to black, if that's okay. If it's only case changing red to black, I would say yes. I thought you were going to suggest you put it up. Oh, no, no. Yes, we go with it. I thought you were going to say put it up. It's been red, it's been changed. Yeah, I don't know why it's been changed, but anyway. Yes, it's been. Yeah, yeah, I think so, yeah. Um, then if I go down to the other things, the, the, the other grants that the, the community trust receives are where the town council have asked. Mm. Um, well, some of them. So, the one that could change is if the council, well, the mind of the, the, uh, this committee to run the Christmas event again, then the two things there, the Christmas parties and the Christmas fair, it could just be one line of the Christmas. I don't think we 
thing. Besides the council, we didn't want to ruin the Christmas parties and the staffing of it. And the community trust decided that it wasn't a good use of manpower and time and, and money. So if we combine those into a Christmas mm. fair, that's what it cost six thousand pounds. Was more than that. I wasn't at the meeting. Six thousand five hundred. Six thousand five hundred. Yeah. We did, you know. Uh, uh, Alex went through the other money that came in. Yeah, six and a half this year. Yeah, yeah. So, but the proposal, there are proposals for extending it next year. So this year was a good event. Mm -hmm. yeah, Things great. like a road closure or extending it to. Well, I, I don't know. Oh, what do you think? Um, Sponsorship. Yeah, because I would think that I would think that would be okay because we did we would had a donation of five hundred pounds from a business and we had. A few hundred pounds, um, I haven't seen the exact figures, but it was three and a half, you know, 350 or 60 was Not coming in from vendors and things. So, okay, you know, really right. so I think if we keep it at that, then we'll raise so it. So, Christmas parties, you didn't do it this year, obviously, because there was no, no. staff. No, so we can, I think we get rid of that. Mm. Um, we, we had quite a lot of complaints. Oh, there was no parties. Well, to be honest, we only had. I don't know how many people, well, even Linda there, there wasn't, it wasn't a, a big turnout, was it? For? For the Christmas party when we did it last Christmas. It's a nice event to have, but... But which one could you run through? You run a children's and an OAPs and then like a cinema for youths. Isn't is, uh, was well, the normal the, way you ran through? The Christmas before? party in the, in the summer set of Children's? Yeah, children's party. And I think the staff... Out, I, from what I yeah, but there's only like 40 mm. families, I think, which, whereas that money could... It's about the amount of stuff it, it took, you know, because it took all the clerks and the staff. Because if you're going to put a cost on a project, an event that the town council is going to run itself, mm -hmm. my management accounting hat would say you instantly have to also allocate the resources you put into it, which would actually make it seem probably quite expensive to, to run but it's events. It seems that the, the community trust, when they want to, can put on an event at Welton Rovers mm. without any issue at all, and then we get to a Christmas party and suddenly there's no staff to do it. And it. what I think we ought to do is outsource, if that's the case, have a fixed cost for, if you're going to have a party, you ask someone like Welton Rovers, how much would it cost for you to put this event on? And they, they've got the bar, they can provide the, the foods, and give us a package price for that event. In the same way, they do, they do these monthly um, afternoons, don't they, afternoon yeah. teas, yeah. which are successful, I understand, don't they? Yeah. Yeah, so if, the, if we can make those a success. Yeah. The only thing is that our kids seem to go to quite a lot of Christmas parties over the period yeah. at various oh. institutions, so, so it's like they are available. Well, the question is, what groups what, what, <laughs> um, what groups do we actually want to provide a Christmas party for? Yeah. Then how do, do we need them? to provide for kids when they probably there's other provisions for them? Is, mm. it, is it the older people that need it? Or well, the money for the, this year's... I would suggest all the people came out of the six and a half thousand pounds of welcome. Okay. Could I say that we know the issues that the elderly are having mm. with loneliness, mm. and I think a Christmas party and that totally is something we should be looking at doing. But not necessarily. Young people have all got their own mm. quirks and mm. groups and dynamics. That um, yeah. I think that's I a really good contribution. The Christmas town, the Christmas town fair mm. was great for. Yeah, uh, families with yes. very young children. I thought there was a huge yeah. turnout. So this question is, do we want to allocate the money to, and that would be th it's three parties, that would it? Well, I would expect what Sean said, I think that's a really good contribution because actually, as someone with lots of spare young children, there is actually a lot of provision, but people of an older demographic probably oh, aren't necessarily, aren't, aren't, sorry? It was probably the OAPs who had more complaints. Yeah, yeah. Come on, yeah. Let's and that's why we're going to that's going to come in. So I was going to say, if anything, that is a service that isn't being provided so well by maybe the sports clubs and the community clubs, and that's where we would be doing well yeah, to devote more resources than necessarily the, the toddlers who do spend a lot of time going to Christmas parties at Christmas because mine do. So I put fifteen hundred pounds for people to take it down. I I would suggest that we we should have something for the elderly, mm -hmm. and I think if we can within the budget. If you're going to have the event in the high street, whether it's a Dickensian light, light switch on or whatever, you can have something in the town hall at the same time that could be part of that, that could provide some it's sort like of... like a youth cinema thing or something. Well, well something, something on the, the same, idea, the same right? event on the same night that yeah. could work as a... Hang on, I've got confused. Are we talking about the um, OAP 
No, no the IEP yeah. thinks it's something that's we need to do. That's stuff we've moved on from that, right? Yeah. I just say that during the switch, light switch yeah. on or the engine light or whatever we have, yeah. the town hall can open, can have a function at the same time. Absolutely. Well, I mean, what did they have this time? They had their two, two entertainers, we had Johnny G and Rocky yeah. uh, making balloons. Uh, in here, outside. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. But you're right. When the town hall's there, we can kind of yeah. shepherd them in. No, the original, the original, uh, the plan went before. You know, when it looked like the town hall will be ready in November, yeah. was to, to have a cinema yeah. on in the evening as well. Wasn't it? Yeah. 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 Yes. Uh, yes. Yes. What? Yeah. What we got? Fifteen. What, what was the last one? Sorry. Yeah. Me, what, what, uh, what? The, uh, the party for the older. Party for old people. We're still on that line. We said yes. Like We've gone fifteen hundred then instead of three thousand. Four thousand, which needs to be moved somewhere else in advance. Is that for budget for community for newsletters and things? Right. So yeah. Okay. So so the thing is, right? We used to spend. I've said this a few times, but people forget. We used to have a fourteen thousand pounds a year budget to sponsor Midsummer Night Life. We stopped sponsoring Midsummer Night Life because we decided the money could be better spent on on other fourteen thousand a year. Right. Right. Which we felt was quite a lot. Um, and it was taking a lot of time. So what we decided to do was stop that and have a budget set aside to take out periodical adverts in the press so we could still support them. So we've done one in Midsummer Night Life this year. It's a nice little centre spread explaining about the town hall. But we haven't done any more. And I think I have asked if we could do more, but the answer has been no. So I was going to say, we shouldn't be budgeting that money if we're not allowed to spend it. But I think that at the moment, a, six, a, a double page centre of Midsummer Night Life is £600, and it would be reasonable to budget for four of them. Six, twelve, so that's £3,000. And we, and we should make oh, an effort. And a half, isn't it? Even if it's just guiding people in the journal to okay. the website. But you've got £4,000 in, in there as a grant. You've got, you've got £2,000 allocated further back for something similar, stationary and Stationary, stationary is for office staff. The, the is it media, media communication is just the newsletters, the right, okay. The stationary, you know, pens, papers, paper. Two thousand pound. Well, that's what they spent the last two years. So. Okay, fair enough. Um, that's what it costs. So you haven't got any notebooks in the office. Yeah, I know. This is guesswork. Well, and this is the thing. I mean, when we get down to this level of detail. It is compared to the to the big issues we've got to face. I have a lot of prices. So, what happened with 3,000 for media communication? Yeah. Carnival, do you want 10,000? Muppets, 10,000? No. For at the moment, I think it might be prudent to meet them halfway. Well, they're not. No, I think we. Well, they did point out we have reduced it quite a bit over the years, which is true. Well, we went down to 10, we went down to 8. Yeah. You can't, well, I will recommend, I don't think they'd be happy if you took it down again. I think it was eight then. Yeah, I think eight is. I think, well, I, feel, I get the impression they will come asking. Well, we, we, but we, I also think that we can support them by asking them to do our martial and security yes, type things as and when we've good. got, when we need it, we can pay the, the, so the work. So we can give them a bit of work. Yeah. That's what it feels like, yeah, yeah, I think that's a better way of doing yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. It's manpower the that we need. The arts program and the arts festival. Mm. Yeah. Well, the yeah. arts program, well, I think so. I mean, that Alex, I don't know whether he well, shared he that. He spent it this year, so I'll yeah. yes, because yeah. I'm going through it. He went through the figures today. Yeah. It's all been spent, yeah. Do you know he's afraid he didn't have one? No. Then he'll run next year. No, we don't plan on running one again in, yeah. in mm. Harry. It's interesting, yeah, maybe. Um, it's yeah. something that I mentioned to Sarah Valley we discovered, and they may do it sort of for us, basically. Yeah, okay. I mean, it was originally know. envisaged, it was the first year that the town park was open and we wanted to get it through the fall. But we haven't done it since. And it was done by the town council, not by the community. Summer fair, you have a summer fair this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's a yes. Um, youth provision, this is the youth club. Mm -hmm. So that discussion, that discussion has been started with Youth Connect South West, who think, although it's quite small, to actually provide staff cover to start a youth club, they can hopefully rejig some of their existing services to um, combine them to run some sort of youth provision in the Zona Centre. I'm, I'm, just, not, I'm just not sure. It's a lot of money going through. I, I think I'll leave, leave it in for the moment. I, I think, I, 
I think we need to, I mean, it's either, it's either not going to be enough to do the job properly. Mm. Um, I think, I think we, we just need to understand, because 10,000 pounds, I mean, that's what, 800 pound a month. Mm. Um, you're not going to get much youth provision for that. And I mean, you can add it on to the 25, but that, that's not going to give you an extra night. No. That's going to just, that's just going to mean that the nights they are doing, they're just going to spend a bit more on them. Mm. And I don't know if that's going to really give you anything more than you're currently getting, because you're not going to necessarily going to attract any more kids in. Well, then is, it, is it not for buying things for the summer centre as well that could be used for? The I think the, well, I think buying things for the summer centre in terms of the could do with a TV and a pool table and stuff like that, I think the community trust is going to manage to handle that. From the connect, talk with youth connect South West, who think they'd be in a good position to help deliver this in the early stages, especially if they said it'd be staff cover because in certain staff ratios and all the rest of it. The thing is, as far as I understand it, the, the money that we um, spend on Youth Connect South West at the moment is quite a small cross-section of the youths. And there is a mass, a large number of youths, I believe, who don't seem to have anything catered for them at all. So this was more that. Now, you're dead right, this might not be enough. But we had to be this meeting with them to understand. And, yeah. you know, they are working with, with quite a small demographic. Yeah. And unfortunately, we, we know that the kids that we really want to reach out to aren't going to turn up at a youth club. Um, we've got a, there's a, there's a demographic in the town that are not the type that are going to be at youth club. Well, no, that's not what that one's, that's for, not really what that's for, is it? Yeah. The, the money we give them, they are targeting that at the children in need. And this is for, for, for a wider yeah, but it's uh, a, scope, which is developed when... It's a, yeah, it's, it's just very vague yeah. at the moment as to exactly what that money's going to do, how it's going to work, whether it's enough money, yeah. whether it just expands the existing two nights that we get, or whether it, no. and what provision it adds to that. No, we, get, uh, we haven't, yeah, I mean, we've not got anything to put out it's, tape yet, but there have been some uh, discussions with um, Sam and Stafford, hmm. UK. they think they can make another night, an extra night work for that, with that sort of money in the solar centre. Um, uh, you know, um, the, the ins and outs of it, the detail of how we do that, I don't know at the moment. But that, that's what he said. Yes, they can make and it work. And, sure and I'm sure, you know, so they pull all their money. They don't isolate. They don't really fancy. No, it's going to be an isolated. That would be a separate. <coughs> yeah, that's no, no, I mean, if they get bigger money from another. Oh yeah, I think there's probably some grant funding from somewhere else could contribute to that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But the other, the other money we're giving them won't contribute to that. The other money we've got is. Is it's designated those things. Yeah, yeah. But this ten thousand with anything else that they can do. I mean, I'm all on board with trying to. Yeah. I and mean, we said at the meeting we, they need, but we need to be specific about what we're getting for effectively a forty percent increase in their budget. Mm. We need to understand exactly what we're going to get for the extra forty percent. Well, we could. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, I think to, to get to, to to classify it as a big uh, increase in their budget is. It's probably um, not strictly correct because they're the, the, the providers that are the most immediate ones we could we approach to, to do it. Mm. So it's a different product. So it's, yeah, yeah, we could you know we 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 could deliver it through the community trust, but then it, it, and the community trust then goes out and finds almost like tenders. <coughs> and they're the, that's the main body that knows the children, that's knows in the area. Mm. Um, so it's it's just a, it's a separate service that, that we're asking them to uh, to help. So, and I think really yeah. You know. Okay, uh, I think leave it in for now, but I think it, it requires a lot of definition yeah, as yeah. to what we're going to do. Yeah. We, need, we need to understand the exact benefit of this. Yeah. If, it just, if it just makes it a bit glossier for the existing kids that already go there, no. it's, got to, it's, got to, it's got to reach no. more. No, I think, I think that from the outset, the, the idea is it's, it's not to do with the existing children that are typically cared for by Youth Connect South West. It's for all the children who, for instance, want to watch a football match for Arnold, not for a pop. And that, I, we get this all the time. What have 14 and 15 year olds got to do when it's night, when it's night time? So, and okay, we want to give them some time. Uh, just, yeah, so I mean, I think we can have this discussion further at yeah. the, uh, the okay, council and maybe right. present some more information there. Um, can I just uh, propose that we extend the meeting? Uh, I don't know how I'm going to dispose of it. Do we, do we you have? Do you want to keep it under 10 minutes? Right, okay. Right. We're trying to go for another 10 minutes. I don't mind minutes. getting sick. We're getting through it, aren't we? Okay, 10 minutes before we need to extend. So, the 10 plus 1, 15,000, that was for Jay's wages. Are you, do you want that 10%? Do you want to put that in, please? Yeah, I think that should 
person oh, no, kept until we have a clearer that. picture of the, what we're doing with Why the town trust. Why does that go in the staffing costs then? Why does that go out as a grant? It's it's the the town trust, which is the town trust. Yeah. Right. And, yeah. Whether, and, 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 you know, I've proposed a staffing committee meeting for early next year, but how we skin this cat in terms of who does what work when, mm. at the moment we're not, it's not sustainable for Jo to carry on doing it and do all the other roles that she's mm. doing it. And so we need more support. Now whether that's that we hire a secretary for the town trust or whether that's we hire some sort of admin support in the office and allow Jo to do the town trust work because she's got all the detail and she knows mm. it all, that's something that we need to really flesh mm. out. Um, so, so you've got various capital projects. Um, so you've got a £1,000 work. Well that's always going to be covered by the seven Valley Rediscovered, isn't it? Yes. So I'll take that one out. There should be a £1,000 in the town park. I'm going to put that back in because although you've got the Summer Valley and you've just agreed to fund it, um, apparently we didn't Catering there, this is this off of my head. Apparently, within, within the proposal, there's only three benches, funding for three benches. Apparently, there's requests for more. So, at the town trust meeting that we had the other week, we have allocated the seven and a half thousand pounds that the WECA have put in for seating. We've decided where those seats are going to be and what they're going to look like. But there was still a desire, there's only three, and quite a lot of places that might like them. We also talked about. Um, Lighting, so whether or not this comes from the Town Council in grants or whether this comes from the Town Trust it sort of needs to be decided, but there's certainly a desire to do more in the town park. I thought that, that was because a significant amount that's un, it hasn't been fully designated yet from the Southern Valley Rediscovered. Yeah, Could well, pay, I think it has. I think has, they've, got line, they've got line items against each budget line, so seven and a half was for the season. They've got, yeah, they. they, they well, um, we would have to contribute as well towards like the, the, the bedding in and the cement and stuff, so I, I think that the thousand pounds would quite easily go. Yeah, because what was it? It was something like 1500 plus 40 for it's not, and that doesn't include installation, so it was like two grand really, probably. Yeah, so, so we got three, didn't we? <coughs> of one of each, yeah. and that was seven and a half gone. Mm. And for the town park? Isn't there a substantial S16? Well, there is, there's, there's half a million pounds. Yeah. Yeah. To come from up the top of the road in. No, exactly. No, no. I mean, but well, in the next probably three years, you'd imagine. Um, does that funnel in three summer values? So, like so the total amount of yeah. the total amount of one hundred six allocated was just over a million pounds, and about nearly half of that was for green space. Four hundred sixty thousand or something. So it was about four hundred and something thousand was allocated for green space, which predominantly is the town park. <laughs> Yeah, it says specifically that the town park between Midtown and Martin and Westfield, so it's yeah. quite specific. Mm -hmm. So there is funding. Um, when, I mean, obviously, it, it depends on the leave agreements and on when they commence work and stuff. Mm. Okay. But usually, they the usually they say something like 50% before commencement of building. Well, it would be awful if we couldn't. Well, no, and we don't know even if it, we don't even know if it will happen in the next financial yeah. year. So there's only oh, Okay, what about so? Oh, we, we keep the town park, Garden of Friendship, Chatswell. So, Garden of Friendship, you need something in there because I'm getting my gardens bundled up. Garden of Friendship, I think you need to buy some personal. Is that for the, the people who may lose the personal? Yeah, yeah. You need to pay for the personal. So, you do okay. not know about the section of There's a. There's no, a yeah, no, that's fine. Uh, what about the Chatswell? Yeah. Yes, that is a yes because that needs the river need. That's actually going to be more than a thousand. Okay. The river needs clearing, we're going to put a thousand in. Right, yeah. But the river needs clearing. Every time I go to St. Chad's, there's rubbish, it clears. But well, doesn't that get it's cleared as part of the maintenance of, of the. It's, it's, it's not, 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 no, it's not in there, not in, um, day, in the. Dave can't do it because it's going to work, so we can't do it on his own. So on the contract, the, but the contract doesn't cover to do like the full clearance. Right. Yeah, so. The uh, thing about St Chad's is there was a security camera bought for there and a mosquito and it was shared between us and Radstock oh, and right. Westfield but then it was moved and it's never come back and now we've got a lot more antisocial behaviour there. Well they did have some big issues in Radstock. Possibly. But mm -hmm. we, um, well, we did, but at some point are we, because at the time 
when we said it's a bit of a shame because the, the mosquito seems to be working well, are we going to put some cover, CCTV coverage and some mosquito coverage back at St Chad's and we never have and that's been a good few years now and the littering and graffitiing there has got steadily worse. So, But we can discuss that bit. Right. I'm just saying it should be slightly higher if anything for St Chad's well. This IT upgrade I'm actually going to take out because Katie and I have had new laptops. Okay. We, because I'm a delegated family, we've all been put some software we want. I don't actually. The only thing is, when we move back into the town hall, are we going to yeah. want to have screens and like be able to plug our laptops in? Because at the moment yeah, it's. Yeah, I'll leave that back. Here's what I'm going to get. Civic Brigade 250. Yeah, keep that. Keep that. Right, okay, so the 50,000 I've, I've. I'm going to go back to the top. 50,000 I've. So, the water weights I need to find out. So I'm. Sorry, I forgot about them. The water weights I've left because I need to go and find that out. Okay. Then it's payable. You've got a query on that. To be honest, this, it's, it's a budget, we haven't got an invoice, so I'm quite happy to tick off the water rates and, and so at £300, I mean, it's, it's not a lot, is it? We're, right. It's a budget, and if what it... About, what about the rent? Well, the if you can clarify that for the next week, too, then. Yeah, I can get that down. Okay, let me go down. Um, the stationery, the 2000 oh, yeah. Health and safety for the West Clues. How do you do that? Do you get a real well, that would be wasper come out and just look at it? Is that what that's for? I think, that, I think that's covered. Health and safety would be covered under your... Because West Clues is your play area. That's inspected quarterly. And then we get... We, we, we just... Well, I wouldn't say you. You just paid out two and a half thousand to repair some stuff. So I'm going to take that down. I don't know if you've got something in there. Oh, I was going to say, that be if you've got a different line for, for the Rosper. Yes, that comes under a different line. That comes under there. That comes under equipment maintenance. OK. And that's the new figure that we've got from Baines yes. for next year? OK. Yes, I'm just going to... Right, so back up to the 2000 stage. The 2000, why have I got 2000 stage? I don't know. Because that's what Gordon just argued for six, for £600 spreads. No, that was the media. Yeah, yeah that was the media. Oh, That's because if you look, we've not it's not been spent, has it? Mm -hmm. Actual you know, five hundred pounds, three hundred pound, one hundred and fifty. So it's the only one. I printed the newsletter myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, I think I put the newsletter on there. Only six copies. But the stationary printing publications, to my mind, that is paper, envelopes. I'm but why is it so much more than in previous years? I'm not I'm gonna take it down to the next one. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Bridge, which is like splintered, and is that what we pay two and a half thousand to, to um, repair? Because they've come up with like a, a sort of a rag you do, for what needs what to be done. In, what isn't in the budget, and it's just come back to mind. We looked at it. You probably do need to budget. Let's say we'll call the options within the next two or three years. You will need to replace all the wooden play equipment at West Cliffs. Yeah. Because it is being repaired and repaired and repaired. So in the next two or three days it will need to be. 
So that's 48 where we've got 1,500 pounds there, West Clues. Mm. So yes. West Clues is mentioned earlier up. Uh, so no, so 400 is the town environment. So because they also Which do is? the cut, they do a grass cut, is that included? Yeah, they do some yeah. Um, lot of things. But they, they don't just do West Clues, they do other areas. So would you leave that as it, 400 then? Yeah, it looks like. 400. And so, then, so that's West Clues, I've got that at 1500 because that's going up every year. And then you've got West okay. Clues at 1500 yeah. as well. Yeah, so that's, that's what we're talking about. It's you? quite an increase, but do you, if you think that's what we need? Well, the 400, the town environment is the, ta is the town park, the planters, you know, you've got planters on the high street, that, that's the town environment. Yeah. West Clues, so I've got myself in the is the play equipment, which I just said. Within the, I reckon within five years, it's all into the basin. I, I so think you're going to, we know it this year or next year, those, those figures are going to have to go up substantially. Yeah. I mean, if you, if, if they, if they vandalise a planter in the high street, I mean, well, that'd be half your budget. Well, all the signage that you put in the town park two days later, three years ago, we're vandalised, they're not mm. replacing them. No. no. Okay, so you we'll want to leave that 1500 then, do we agree? Leave it 1500? Yeah. Front of 4000. So that's the latest schools, which is called some debate. That's the latest schools, so I'm going to skip that. Those are the ones that have just been vandalised, no? No. Those are proposed are new ones. No, yeah, that we haven't really discussed. Yeah, to the ATC a few months ago. Right. Well, that's okay. another one, isn't it? If we, we removed all those other things there, uh, things that go on other working, other work parties put in, that's an extra thing that hasn't. Been discussed as part of a strategy, I know. Yeah, so there are lots of, you know. So, so, so I've got furniture and equipment in the town environment. So, again, that's back to, you know, that's your notice boards. There's, there's talk about putting notice boards along the river on the high street. Um, I think that's what? already paid for. It's no, not the river signage work, we've right. paid for Andy King's time mm -hmm. um, and the last thing you told me to do was speak to Stefan Chivers and Baines to work out where it could be placed that could be agreed by both Baines and the town council because on the river we didn't own anywhere that we could put it. Um, I'm trying to get in touch with the meeting in the new year. Mm -hmm. But you paid, so far you paid £500 for, for town environment furniture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's the town environment Yes, there is. Do you wish to extend? Yes, do you wish to extend? Yes? Well, uh, Karen. Oh, I didn't think so. <laughs> <laughs> mm, yeah. Cool, we're nearly there, we're nearly there. Come on, finance. We're nearly there. This is my aim this morning. Okay, so, right, so let the signage. Yeah. So, property maintenance, you oh, need, right. I've just plucked a figure out here. Yeah. I don't actually quite know what property maintenance is because it's, it seems to be covered by every, it seems to be covered under all the cross centres. Does Dave do the maintenance of the equipment maintenance? Yes. The so no, that's 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 the the maintenance. Maintenance. It's always buying little bits and pieces, mm -hmm. like a post box for us, yeah. yeah. a light, or yeah. 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 I, don't, I find that, the long code, right? Yeah, that's what I find confusing the codes, and I think that. Okay. The, the topic needs to go somewhere else. Do you know what I mean? It's quite it's hard to work because the three is, it's three different codes. It's, it's it's like it's, it started off as a system, and you can tell over decades. Yeah. Things being bolted on. We're bolt on a new yeah. category here and a new category mm. there, and it really needs to be. A bit of an overhaul of yeah. it on the case. So. Van Allen. Van Allen. Sixty-six. You don't need five thousand. Yeah, but have we not got the? Because we talked about this a few meetings ago about how much we've actually spent in recent months on the repairs to the van, and that was a figure that. Was she going to go away? Yeah, yeah. I don't know if I've seen it, but she, yeah, the yeah. van has certainly been into repair a few I've times since I've been here. So I did ask this question a while ago, but I've not seen it. Yeah. Exactly, so I've not seen in the expenses paid lots of garage bills. So where, how do we actually pay for those repairs at the moment? Well, we put it on the credit card. Right, so that would be coming out next month's bills then. So I just haven't seen these repair bills for the van. So it's quite disappointing because you're right, we bought it last year for £7,000. So could we ask for clarification on the van? Yeah. Cost what the actual maintenance has been? Because the original idea was thinking if it lasted for even three years, it would have been cheaper than leasing. Considerably so cheaper. We'll, we'll just skip over that, we'll leave it and move yeah, on. 5000 What's that? Well, I think we should learn from Radstock 
because they've just bought an electric van for their town warden. I think we could maybe see how they get on with that yeah. and learn a few lessons. Right. I think that there are, there are, that's gonna is not going to last forever, is it? No. So there, are, there are some financial advantages for us moving to a and lease, and, and particularly an electric lease vehicle. Well, and also, in the paperwork, we're going to recently set out, set out if you're doing a clean air zone in this and not, then you can if you're doing anything. We have no plans yet for a clean air zone. If we're, if we're being imposed, if a clean air zone is being imposed upon us. Yeah, well if it is, that <coughs> might be a good time to change to electric power. Yeah. It's not being imposed and it's unlikely to be happening in the next 12 months. Yeah. So okay. You've got, you've got it on John Tom. Which one are we on? 69. 69. Legal fees. Yeah, it legal seems... Legal fees, you've got 5,000 there for legal fees and then you've also got 8,000 further there. Which one do you want? You want to buy lots of consultants. So, what do we get rid of then, Kate? But legal fees, that's not consultant fundraising, is it? No, no. Legal fees are, so we've, got, we've got about three different solicitors. It's very confusing because sometimes, for some reason the town council has taken on the <coughs> town trust solicitors to do pieces of work. So, that, so, that, so that in terms of that cross-contamination between the staff trying to work with different solicitors to do different things, it's really confusing. Mm. Because when we went to go and see one set of solicitors, they started talking about town council business, but we were there on town trust business, so, you know, all that mm. kind of stuff. But there are quite a lot of different solicitors that are doing different things, that, have, that hold the leases for different properties that we've, you know, taken and on. Is that a good it. thing? No, no, it's very confusing. I would have said that was very confusing. Well, it's confusing that, it's, that they've that they've cross-contaminated the work. If it was just that we had a different solicitor for each mm. trust that we were yeah. organisation that we were acting on behalf of, then it would be a lot simpler. So for thirteen thousand pounds for legal fees, do we need thirteen thousand pounds for legal fees? I don't know because I haven't seen a single bill for legal fees. This is, up in there. This is what, I mean, I think unfortunately, Kate and Katie have only been here three months, <laughs> and they're going to need a year mm. to unravel a lot of the nonsense so this, that's in there. So but we don't be left short in the meantime so while they're. That figure would have come from. So this five thousand, the chair will take it down to fifteen hundred. That is about three hours. But with, but without any. Well, what's the what if you reduce the two together to ten thousand? So what's the so five and five? What would that be? Do you think? Certain things. Well, the thing is that the, at some point historically, those numbers had a value for a reason, didn't they? It's not being spent, has it? So five and eight thousand. Those figures because, as Katie said, there's an awful lot to sort out. There's a lot of leases coming up. Mm. I don't think the town trust will, will have to. So, someone said if we do a lease to the town trust, they'll have to pay the leases. Well, but it, it still comes back to the point where the town trust get their money from. Yeah. So, when we've got it in our budget or we put it into a grant to them, it's the same. The money has to exist. It has to no, exist. they don't need to go in a grant to them. They would, they would pay out of their, the money that comes into them, their income. From where? From their leasing it out to, lease, leasing it to the community trust, if you're talking about a sewing centre or, you know, if the town has different. It's more the town trust though, isn't it? That we need to kind of be cognizant of. But yes. what the Charity Commission was very clear about when I spoke to them this week was that anything the town, the town trust, it should all go through their bank account. So whether it's the paying for the insurance, whether they're paying for the solicitors, whether they're paying for whatever, it should be very transparent in all of our accounts who's paying for what. So if the town council is paying for things, doesn't work, we should give them a grant and they should pay for it themselves. Which in mm. terms of the tax, isn't necessarily always the best way of doing mm. things, but this is the setup we find ourselves with. And this is, right. and, it, and it would cost us more to try and change the trusts, or you know, I think it would be very difficult to unpick legally. So I think we are where we are. Okay, we so I think for now, we'd, we'd probably just better leave those as they are. We can just, we may have further information on the, the 8th of January, or we'll, we'll discuss it further whether we think that's the appropriate amount. For now, we'll just sort of move on from that bit. Okay? But we could combine the line, couldn't we? So it's yeah. Yeah. clear. It's, it's, uh, yeah, it's the same thing. Right. Okay. So I put 30. Mm. You got rid of the other one? Yeah. Yeah, mm. good. <laughs> okay, right, so where are we? Both lines are still in there. Memorial. Yeah, no, I'll, 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 okay. <laughs> yeah, so are we, are we putting a Y for that? Yeah. Is it yes? Yeah. Well, no, we'll leave, we'll, we'll look at it and we'll uh, be at the next okay. meeting. So, so you've got £500 for professional fees for memorials. That's. When did you last spend money on the centre When we had it cleared. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's been fortunate. About a year ago, was it? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah. So that's what we've been cleaning. Yeah, yeah. 
And you okay. could do it on the clean again now, I think it's looking a little bit right. green. Okay, so both of these keep that in the app, put a yes for now. Five thousand shell will take that and and that we we really can't at all. That's that's for your that was for paying the strategy working party to come do a consultant to write some strategies. So has, has, that been, has that been removed now? No, this is not Well, it should be, because it, yeah, says, it. it says remove cap for it, and it's still there, okay. so it gets confusing. Serious expenses. Um, say, I, I don't know what the cost is. Yeah, it's a lot of expenses, and then why you have um, civic service. Is it, is it your... Go on, sorry, the civic expenses and the civic what? Service. So, yeah. But is the civic service the civic awards that we've just done? Yeah. But is the civic, um, the other one, is that for gifting in any capacity? Do you ever do any kind of. No. No. It's nothing to remember today, is it? The civic um, expenses. Is it cost of closing the roads or wreaths, anything? Wreaths, perhaps. That, that would come civic under expenses and wreaths. That would come under civic regaining. I d is it? I'm sure somebody said that one of those budgets was for wreaths or something to do with remembering steam. Ah, I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to check. I tell you what I'm going to do. Yeah, but the wreaths are about £100. Yeah, but I've just talked about the cost of it. I'm going to do. The budget line. I may be completely wrong. I need to change the line. You do need a line for perception. One, three, seven expenses, which is a power of our support, such as your remembrance wreaths. That's a power of Okay. Because we because don't have a Okay. Brilliant, that's good. Where are we next then? <laughs> and that's the yes. Yeah. Um, we should really have that one three seven again. Yeah, we've um, uh, it's just oh, a fifty there, then, is it? 50 there. Right. Okay. So so for you to be a good case, we talking about we'll have up the white Yeah, we'll do the ten, yeah. <laughs> Well, Cheryl um, reduced that to 40, I think, haven't she? Right. So what is the current because we've got 50, which included the 10 for youth provision, so she separated right. them out. Hang on, that's not what that's not what it was. The 50,000 from the very start has been a provision ring fence yeah, for the town. Something or, it was divided up into something. Cheryl's else. chopped it and changed it in her little project. Well, no, there was it, was, it was 20 for wait, was it 20 for no, staffing and 30 50, for 50, always 50,000 for. The unknowns. Oh, so it's opening it back. But when you yeah. just defined the other meeting, you did say that it was divided up into separate parts, didn't you? No, no, no that's why we the last meeting. It says to include running cost plus 20,000. So you've got 30,000 to start on, 20,000. So, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. so what we established this afternoon from chatting to Eric, um, Alex at the Town Trust is sure. that. Um, there's, there's a number of costs we've got to look at. Yeah. Obviously, the first one is the initial opening of the hall. And is there any inventory required in terms of fixtures, fittings, yeah. furnishings, stuff yeah. like that? The second thing is, if we assume that, that it's a start-up business effectively, and it's not going to be running at 100% capacity during the first year, um, it's not going to necessarily be covering its, its utility costs. It's also... With the staffing, we know that the previously it was there's a lot of volunteers and goodwill in terms of yeah. making sure it was open at nine o'clock in the morning and closing at ten o'clock at night. But the vast majority of that was actually Paul Myers running around doing all of that work. And he was down there pretty much every day sorting yeah. out things. And Patricia. So. Yes, Patricia did that. Yeah. Bit. Right. So we need this this provision of fifty thousand. If anything, is low. Well. Because if you assume that your overheads, in just in utilities, 30,000, I think, would be a, an underestimate. So you need, so I think you're going to, your utilities are going to be at least 30,000. You're going to need some contribution towards staff. So you're probably going to need 20,000 pounds. For the amount of hours you're covering, 13 hours a day, almost seven days a week, you're going to need... Huh? Staffing. Yeah. Right. Well, we did have a we did have that before. 
Mate, you didn't have it before, you had Paul Myers. Yeah, but I mean, you wasn't there, but you're really talking about somebody opening it, somebody closing it. No, no, you're no not. So, no, that, no, you were, Paul Myers opened it and closed it, that's what you yeah, said. No, he, he, no, he, he wasn't was there down, at the time. He also dealt with all the disputes between, and all the issues that people had when they were hiring the halls and, yeah, and stuff like that. The community trust is taking on another member of staff who's going to be, um, what, eight tenths full time? So that's going to give them a lot of capacity. We chatted about this earlier as well to, to, to share that load between the, the summer centre it's, and the town hall. So it's up to you. I, all I'm saying is I don't want the project to fail. Mm. So I'm saying put in a sensible provision to ensure in its first year that we cover the utilities, we keep the lights on, we keep the heating on, we make sure that the staff are available when they're needed mm. to deal with all the issues you've got when you're managing community space and lots of different groups with different needs. You know, when, when this group finishes, and the next group come in and the place is a tip, or this group have overrun by half an hour and the people are queuing up waiting to go in and use the hall. There's numerous issues that come with this type yeah, of community yeah. space. And they did so, manage before though, I'm going to say there are numerous issues, but they did manage before. You know, that's the thing. The time was wasn't there to no, tidy no, the water no. away. And, and when we had the cinema, going, we used to go and open up in the morning. Oh. Mm. And we kept it open all day, and well, then we closed it down we at don't night. Know, what, what we what don't want to a new hall, where people just been able to wander in and out as they at, at will. Um, particularly with the issues we've got, we know we've got issues of antisocial behaviour and youth crime in the in the town. Um, so an open door policy is good to no, an extent, no, think, but it has no, to be. No, I think the way it worked before was people were, were booked in, or the way I'm assuming it would work is people are booked into user space; they have access mm -hmm. to the space. So there the may be a central area, I'm, I'm, what I would imagine was the, the council or the staffing will be somebody using the office, so the office will be, will be staffed, the, the town hall will be open. Mm -hmm. So the immediate um, entrance will be open where there's toilets available, but the rest of the, the town hall needn't be open, it can be locked and secure, but if a group is coming to use it, they would have a key code, a key to get into that space, look after that space, and which is what was happening before. I think. You just need somebody on top of that to, to manage that, I need somebody to make sure it's opened and closed okay. in the morning. I think you make a good point there because yeah. if we are going to be working there, are we going to have constant knocking on the door asking for, like, is that going to be a town council then responsibility even though it's the community? No, I don't think it should. should it? Well, no, it shouldn't, no. but we've got this reception desk that's being built, but there's, yeah. no, there's no plan at the moment to have a receptionist sitting there and doing no. that. No, I don't think it should be because it's not that sort of space. Here. If there's events Should it? On, should it? I don't know. Well, no. well, I mean, in the in the future, I would like to see it used, well, well I don't know, during the day. It's somebody on reception because it, the, the, although we have asked for passes, for the a lockable door to, to passes, so to, so people can't wander in and out, so, so the staff there are a bit secure, we've asked for some passes. So if someone's coming in and knocking on the door and waving in the office, we're going to be in and out of the offices, so you do need somebody on that reception space. Mm -hmm. So if they come in and they use the toilet, we then go back to the office, they can go off on the lift, they can go upstairs, so you, need, you do need somebody in that reception. They did manage before. Well, yeah, we did the last you had an entrance. I never went toilet. into the old place, yeah. but as I understand it, you could just go to the toilet and that was the end of your interaction with the town hall. Yeah. Well, or you could knock on the door to get access to the council. Okay, fine, but well, now... you could walk through, actually. Could you? Could you? Yes, because where the toilets were, you could come out and sort of in front of you, then there was a, 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 a hallway going down, and there was, what, three, off, three little rooms that were rented out regularly for consultations and so on. And it went into the beach and... Yeah, the beach no, I think there wasn't a door there. And you went there. through there, that was there. You had to knock. So you were free to roam around. You could actually, yes. Okay. I'm not sure well, well, that's what if you are confident that we don't need staff, we won't be staff. I if you're confident that we don't I, need... I, I think we need to leave the 50,000 in, and I don't think we can pinpoint exactly now what this is going to be spent on, but I can foresee that we will need, we'll have teething Issues and we realise and we identify exactly what we do need once we get it. It's, I, it's think, I, I think, I think, because I think about the figures, because I know the running is really important, but I feel like this we need to do the figures, which I know does all permeate down. But is that 50 grand just for the town hall? Because the likelihood is the town hall probably won't be ready to end of the summer next year. That's my vibe. The what? It was the ready until East April, yeah, mate. But that's not what we're planning for. No, okay, so, but the summer centre upgrade or anything isn't in there, is it? No. Mm. But so, we're wondering whether the staff can sort of 
work across sites? Like, mm. what can that look like? So there's, no, there's nothing in the library but I'll wait, I'll wait in the same time. Okay, I just, I just, because that's going to come first. So, but well, that's a yes. town trust, and it's really trust. Okay, that's right. It, so it does affect us if they can't pay their bills yeah. because they'll come knocking on the door looking for grants. Yeah. But I'm just thinking that fifty might be pushed up a bit earlier. Exactly. I wanted to see a couple of things. Right. A couple of things. So, for a start, I mean, I think Chairman did make a good suggestion that was that that money should be general project contingency to give the council the flexibility. Yeah. As you said, it might be we need some extra help, uh, the community trust does with the summer centre when it opens. It could be it's the town hall. We don't know. So it's probably wrong to try and earmark it too closely. Mm. But, um, well, I think there is some sort of ring fencing on it. Well, I, we, I, don't I, want, we don't want another table tennis table. I mean, we want to make sure <laughs> that the money is used for the purposes that we're talking about now. Well, we need to make sure the money is used uh, where it's needed and effectively. And the second thing I want to say is, um, I personally am a little bit unsure about um, such a large amount of money, £50,000, right, which is whatever percentage of the precept. Is it 10 10%? Well, we are, we right. are But I was going to say, the thing is, such a large amount going on, on top of the money that the council has spent on the, the precept to pay for the Public Works Loan Board, and I wonder if residents would... Uh, quite rightly go, that seems an awful lot of money to commit in one year to the town hall. And I think it might be reasonable as a resident said that you've just taken out a £590,000 loan, why are you having to increase the precept by another £50,000 to open well, the door? Thing. Thing. The because the difference between capital, thing. capital and revenue here is a totally different thing, capital and revenue. Capital is what we, that's been done and the grant money's been spent and no provision has been put in place for what happens when the grant money runs out and the town hall opens. And that's what we're doing now, is making sure that, that we keep the, keep the lights on for the first year. Um, and I think it would look a lot worse to the public if you have to shut the doors halfway through the year because you can't afford to pay the bills. Um, so I think it's very, it's very important that we understand this is a revenue issue, not a not a, a capital issue that we're dealing with here. Mm. Um, well, I, I personally don't. I personally don't see it, and I've made that I mean, the, the, clear. We, we've got the public works loan. That's that's a given, and we've already agreed that this the town hall isn't going to be contributing towards the repayments of that public works loan. So that's already something that's in the precept that effectively we'll all be paying for. Yeah, there may be yeah, money. There may be money less at the end of the public works loan. I just I've allocated the entire five hundred ninety. But, the, but that can't be spent on the revenue of mm. utilities and no, staff. No, it, it can be spent on stuff, what I call yeah, like the opening of the, yeah. 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 But again, I don't know how much of that is going to, I've, I've put all of that. So the, bus, the business plan suggested the town hall should be close to breaking even. But the business plan is completely flawed. Possibly completely flawed, but completely flawed by a tune of £50,000. More than £50,000. It, it's flawed by more than fifty thousand. Okay, I'm just, I'm just saying. Personally, I don't see the fifty thousand pounds chunk just for the town hall, and that, that is what makes me a little bit concerned about such a large amount of money yeah. being added onto the precept when the town hall should be slightly cheaper to run than it was yeah. before the rest. Okay, good, good. Charlie, I was just wondering if we do stick to this budget, what is? Can you work out the percentage increase? Yes. Yeah. No, that we were yeah. talking about. Yeah, no, you'll do that afterwards. I think, really, we, we, we probably... That's, that's the main question, isn't it? Sorry, sorry. No, it's, no, I think no. Kate will work that out when we... No, I, th I just wondered if, because she's inputted the figures, yeah, if it, does what, it automatically now. what we can look at the increase that the residents will have to pay. I don't, I don't know, I haven't had the tax bill to figure it out. Right. Okay. But if we do that, that percentage the increase at the top there, 16.62. That's the Yes. With those figures well, updated, they automatically update. So that's what we're looking at, yeah. With the 50,000 pounds. Right, sorry, thank you. That's what I was asking for. Increase on your preset from last year. Right, yeah. But well, I'm doing figures because in a different thing. Um, yeah. That's what you paid the last three years. This, I don't know, I can't work anything out. No, no, that's, that was the big one. So I'm supposed to get it yeah. before Christmas, aren't we? So, yeah, it's, so any any second it's going to So happen. I think really, uh, maybe I propose that we 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 go with what we've got there. I I like Gordon. I feel that's to ask to put fifty thousand pounds on the preset, and when people say 
what's the precept? Why have you got fifty thousand pounds extra on the town hall? That you haven't quite defined what you're using it for. Um, then I think that's a, that's I find it have difficulty with that. A, a smaller amount, I, I don't mind. Um, and again, with Gordon and I've been spoken to Alex. We don't know whether we need that uh, sort of money, but I think for the time being, I think we could talk about otherwise we're going to be here till ten o'clock. Mm. I think if we say we we'll leave that fifty there yes. without a Y next to it, that's the in that way that's the main issue that we'll need discussing at full council. Uh, well, I was going to say one one of the things. So one of the things that this meeting should really do is present options to full council to decide. Because we can't go through this meeting again mm -hmm. in January, it's just not a thing. So what I'd recommend, right, and I will actually propose it, is this budget there is proposed, and if anyone seconds it, as a recommendation. And I will also propose the, the alternative, which Cheryl did, is proposed as a recommendation. Then. No, okay, so, so, don't, please don't interrupt, Sean. Please don't, I'm going to say, the, the, full, full, council, full, full, council, and full Council have a simple choice between two options and the meeting in January will be effective and decisive, which it needs to be because we can't have this length of discussion Why have we spent the again. whole time going through this and now we've only got a handful of ones that need to be further discussed if we're just going to now bring in another budget which isn't doesn't belong to the RFA who you employ okay. to oh, do fair enough. It's just because I thought you were meant to produce, um, it says that we're meant to produce two options. Well, I think for the, no, for the handful, for the handful okay. that don't have okay. a wire against, right. you know, perhaps we can, well, we've said that we'll get more information on the figures and perhaps there can be a choice at full council that we can present at, at that juncture so it's an easy decision for, for the full council to make so it doesn't take forever. So there'd be like one choice with 40,000 and one choice with 50, for yeah, instance? Yeah, so, so then, whatever, whatever your, it's going to get right before you make the recommendation, you go to full council in general. So, whatever we pay for you, I will, I will then send this out. I will keep, I will, this is my last copy. I will tidy up a bit. I will then send it out with the, with the supporting papers and say, this is the budget discussed at FNO. The items with the Y by it, they have agreed and I'm happy with those figures. The figures with no Y are up for discussion. Yeah, but I don't think, and I'll say it again, I don't think that the final council meeting uh, with all the things that are on the budget, it would be better if we had some clear and decisive options that full council can vote on. Because as soon as we say these are items are up for discussion, you might be looking at a you meeting which cannot items. fit in within its allocated time. And if we don't make that you've decision, got, then you've got three items up for discussion. Well, it's amazing how long people can take discussions, but it, getting very close to the, um, the, the, the the bone really when it comes to January, we can't be in a position where we're having to extend time because the budget hasn't been approved. Now, I, I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want to present someone else's I think it, it you know, right. yeah, sorry, but I think to make it clearer to people, it would be you know, expedient to, to okay. offer this model, um, which has addressed some of Cheryl's um, uh, points that she raised. There's an opportunity between now and January for individual councillors to contact their clerks and put some you know, points uh, forward that can be I'm, I'm brought up. Well, so and there are just two or three, th well, three or four things. The van. I think maybe we could provide a bit more justification with the Youth Connect um, you know, £10,000 thing. The van cost the £50,000 there. So there's a few things that we, not many, that we that we can vote on. I think if you present this as a more or less final version with just three or four things that we are, you know, there's a little bit of discussion about, I think that would be my proposal. Well, I, think, I think there was a, there was a, there was a number of things in Cheryl's. Cheryl's was very good, but she's coming late to the party and she's trying to catch up. And there were a lot of things in there that Kate said, you know, obviously the insurance issue, the issue of £5,000 for an election. There were a lot, a lot of issues in there that weren't correct, so we'd be wrong to present that budget. Yeah. The one thing I would probably agree with Gordon on is with this £50,000, rather than just ring fence it for the town hall, if you also included the Soma Centre in that as well, because I still feel there is potential some issues there. I mean, say the last accounts that the community association submitted showed an income of 22,500 and an expenditure of 30, 32,000. So they were nearly 10,000 pounds loss on their last accounts. Okay. Now there may be good justification for that, yeah. but it makes me nervous if the, if the group that's already organising it have 
showed a £10,000 deficit. So to ring fence that 50000 for both projects, contingency, is that fair? Well, I'd say so much then for the Town Hall contingency. Well, I'm just saying it's going to feed up for the same as and um, but I do seriously think that at the end of next year, at the end of that financial year, we'll be glad there was fifty thousand pounds in there. Um, yeah, that the, the, the bus business, co business costs on utilities is only going one direction at the moment, and a lot of businesses are really struggling, seeing quadruple increases in their costs. So, does so somebody need to propose that we? We don't because it's just a, there's no resolution. We're not just a recommendation. But so this. To, 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 to full council. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Good. I'm, I'm happy. I think you've done a really good job, yeah. Kate. <laughs> yeah. I do too. I mean, so, can I declare the meeting closed then? Yeah. 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 All right, the meeting's closed. We can carry on talking. Thank you, Kate. Thank you, Kate. Yeah. No, I think. No, that's what I was trying to see. I think we've had time to look at it between now and January, and we just look at those individual high lines there. Gordon will be very firm, I'll say <laughs> these are things. But these are changeable. Um, <clears throat> Martin, I'm going to take a look at the 